Hello, everyone, and welcome to tonight's episode of Critical Role, where a bunch of us nerdy-ass voice actors sit around and play Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, happy to be back in Campaign 3, uh, but very thankful for Brennan Lee Mulligan and all the amazing players from EXU Calamity. Uh, super proud, super excited, and uh, just uh, it, sad that I missed you all for the month, but happy to see such an amazing story and be told. Uh, and now, as we come back in, we do have some announcements to get through, beginning with our first sponsor of the night, Quip. Sam? Sam? Oh boy. Where is he? Oh no. Oh yes! Ah! I'm oh, back no. for a return engagement, everybody! It's me, Ludo McGillicuddy, here at the Quip Public Domain yeah. Lounge, <laughs> where the breath is fresh, the music is free from copyright protection. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Beethoven wrote this song, but I can change it because he's dead and can't sue me. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hey, pal, mind grabbing me one of Quip's new limited edition electric brushes from the old brush bar? No. Well, please. <laughs> <laughs> it has all the colors of the rainbow in matte and a matte metal handle that lets you brush loud and proud while helping the LGBTQ plus community. <laughs> Uh, Quip's donating $5 to the Ali Forney Center, founded in 2002 to protect the lives of LGBTQ plus youth from homelessness with every limited edition Pride Electric brush purchased. This is actually really cool. So why don't you run to the old brush bar and bring me back one? Okay, well, that's actually a really amazing promotion, but this is not an actual lounge, there's no such thing as a brush bar, and I am not a waiter. Mmm, that reminds me of this public domain song. Yeah, no, 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 he said, this guy's very rude. He claims he's not a waiter, but it looks like one to me. Yo, 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 he should try Quip's anti-cavity toothpaste. It's got really fun flavors like watermelon and mint. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Rude! Like you're the one who's rude. This has been the whole time. Easy there, Mr. Mephistopheles. That song wasn't about you. That is not my name. My name is Matt. It is M A T T. M A T T. Well, Master Chief, this next song is dedicated to you. I hate this. It had to be you. It had to be you. <laughs> The waiter with the mane who spells out his name and said I was rude. All right, wrap it up, Regal. Okay, no problem, Mogwai. On behalf of Quip, it's Ludo McGillicuddy reminding you oh, to no. start getting rewards for brushing your teeth today at getquip.com slash critical roll 25 and save 25% no. statewide when you use code critical roll 25. Good night! That's making me sweat. And you have good habits. Hail to the teeth, they're the ones that Quip keeps cleaning. Oh wow! <laughs> My God! Thank you, Sam, and thank you, Quip, and thank you for uh, this amazing Ow. initiative that you're taking. I'm sorry that all of this. Uh, <laughs> The lounge. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. This episode is also sponsored by a brand new partner to the show, Guardio, who develops solutions to help improve users' online experience, combat threats, and create a highly secure environment. The Guardio browser extension protects users as they browse online, keeping your valuable information, messages, and making info as safe as possible. <laughs> Guardio detects threats before they reach your browser and cause harm, unlike traditional solutions that only remove threats once they're on your device. Oh no. All you have to do is add the browser extension from Chrome slash Edge Store, for those who use Edge, and a free security scan will detect threats immediately. And each subscriber can add five family members for free. Enjoy 10% off your yearly or monthly plan right now at guard.io slash critical role. Nice. Woo! I like that at Yeah. Marisha, you got uh, got some stuff to talk about? I do. You guys, the next episode, episode four of Four Sided Dive, airs Tuesday, July 5th at 7 p.m. Pacific on Twitch and YouTube. And it's ladies' night. It's oh. ladies' night. Oh, what a night. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. <It's great. laughs> Sam, you got something to talk about? I do, I do. <laughs> 
uh, hey guys, we have a new album coming out, but actually for real, not this character. It's, it's a real thing. It's a real thing. Yes. Uh, Welcome to Taldori is our brand new Critical Role brand new album. Yeah. Just released a full length so soundtrack titled yes. Welcome to Taldori. The team crafted nearly an hour of immersive tracks that take you on a journey through the continent of Taldori. Mm. It's music to heighten the atmosphere of your games. This microphone does not work, by the way. Nope. <laughs> The 17 tracks are written by a variety of composers, including members of the Hexany Hexen? Hexany Hexany Audio roster, Woo. Omar Fidel, and our good friend Colm McGinnis. Yeah. Yeah. And we can't forget the gorgeous album art is by Kent Davis. It's, it is out on all digital music platforms <laughs> under Critical Role, so go buy it or stream it right now. Yeah. Laura, yeah. it's ladies' night. <laughs> oh, what a night. <laughs> Uh, first up, I'm going to talk about some new merch if that's surprising to any of you. <coughs> what you got? What you got? What you got? I have. Look at we got pins. Yay! You know, they're new shaving pins, and it's all of the EXU fam. The, what? The original EXU fam. So yeah, we got our Dory. Oh my goodness. We got our Darius. My boy. We got a. Fear a ride. Fear a ride. Yeah. We got a Oro. That's me. I'm small. A little fern. No, and oh, don't oh, forget. Opal! Oh, yeah! yeah. yeah. Hey! Okay, and in addition to these beauties, which you can go check out right now, we also have this back in stock. Oh! Oh, oh the old school! Oh, hell yeah! Oh, it's wow. like an updated Ooh. version, it's a different material, that, but it's actually, I think, softer than the first one. That's print. impossible! I know. That version's pretty soft. That's actually, We've been out of stock for a while, oh, wow. and I'm very Ooh. happy we have them back. I'm so ordering it now. Check it yeah. out! And in addition to that, oh! In addition to that! We have new dice, but these are special Legend of Vax Machina dice. Oh, cool. So here, let me show you. Oh, they're beautiful, kind of goldy and fabulous, swirly. I yeah, see the and the bag I think is really pretty because it looks like a little galaxy. Oh, oh, little yeah. Just the little things, you know. Anyway, love you guys. Check it out there in the store. <laughs> Perfect. Oh yeah. Oh. In addition to that, we also have this. Oh. What? I know. It's wow. our first I night. I've never seen anything oh, like it. Wow. Our first night of Avalier tea, <laughs> made especially for EXU Calamity. Uh, Turn it upside down. <laughs> oh. Oh. Can I put it on? Sure, Ashley. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes. Wow. Wow. You look so good in it. Sorry, Mac. Yeah. Anyway. Sorry, not sorry. Sorry, not sorry. Marisha. Oh. Oh yes. <laughs> and then one more thing for me. Oh my gosh, you guys! Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You're about to see our brand new opening title. What? So excited! Set to our theme song. It's Thursday night. Uh, big shout out to Minnow Mountain who helped us animate it and partnered with us. It's incredible. They're amazing. It's amazing. Um, yeah, just you know what? Just enjoy. That's all I'm gonna say. Can we just good. watch it right now too? Well, well, I believe been... that concludes our announcements, so let's go ahead and jump into tonight's episode of Critical Role. <laughs> Our friends 
ship will rise But one thing's for sure We never give up on the fight Oh, get ready It's Thursday night And welcome back. <laughs> so, last we left off, Bell's Hells had been hot on the trail of Armand Treshi after uncovering many of the misdeeds he had been attempting within the city of Drusar. With their alliance with Lord Eshteros, they had helped place a platinum band that had been enchanted upon his ring at a bell, with the help of uh, their Erishari friend, not Erishari, oh, Erishari friend there, but uh, Er. Elemental, my brain totally, wow. What was his name? <laughs> Dorian, it would be easier to say his name, Dorian. Wow, gone for a month, my brain's already melted. That one there, yeah. That one there, yeah. Yeah, that's great. Uh, well, old machine. Way to come out strong, Matt. Um, fire, sorry, I should've just started. So it works. Everybody dies. Everybody works. Tried and true, work, it works before it'll work again. Um, <laughs> I know, man. I missed this. Uh, so yes, upon uh, putting this this ring upon Armand to keep tracking his whereabouts in the city, you left northward and returned a bit later to discover that he had left. He had fled the city southeast. You agreed to help Eshteros in hunting him down, taking the the orb that was affixed to the enchantment on this ring. To when you were within proximity, you would know the direction he knew from you. You went ahead and took upon the sky ship, <laughs> known as the Silver Sun, and read southeast across the skies of the Hellcatch Valley towards the city of Basaris, where it seemed Armand was laying low. Upon this trek, you did battle with a number of dangerous sky creatures. You helped uh, defend a caravan that was being hunted by a wayward Dustra, a massive squid like creature digging through the dust. And upon coming to the city itself at night, the sky ship decided it shouldn't stick around, as this is not part of really any sort of approved uh, air pathis, pathis, wow, I am done. You're doing great, Matt. You're doing great, Matt. You're doing great, Matt. You're doing Nah, I'm calling it here. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, man. We're excited. Ah, uh, indeed. You have to watch me slowly melt down in real time. Um, upon coming to the outskirts of Basarus, the skyship leaves you behind within a day's journey, should you require it to return and pick you up. Here you made contact with one of the many crawler gangs that run the region surrounding the city. You began to mark continuous shapes and colors of tattoo-based designs that marked the Gajakandas, the ones that kind of protect the main guardian laws of the city. Upon walking into the center, you found yourself to the caravanserai, uh, the Rahaden, purchased a night's rest, and then emerged to seek out the directional blip of Armand's tracking signal in the orb that you carry. Along the way, you heard a scuffle in a nearby alleyway and saw this individual dusk being harried by a number of ne'er-do-wells, cutthroats that were attempting to take what was theirs. You then stepped into this alleyway and came to their aid, beating down these individuals and leaving them behind as you made your first encounter and introduction with this character, Dusk. Now, after having a brief bit of conversation, you decided to continue to pursue the directional draw of this arcane blip. And along the way, it seems, in the southern direction of the city of Basaras, there lay a particular tavern referred to as a Taste of Taldore yes. that seemed to reside at least in the similar space of the reach. Um, Lodna pulls out the little Glowy orb. Mm -hmm. Has he moved? Best you can tell, it still seems the general same direction it was the night before you've been traveling, so not any major shifts in movement yet, no. I mean, we can take a quick moment, right? To just go grab a bite to eat. Everyone's got to eat. <laughs> this is true. And this Very true. Taste I, of Taldori. Keep going. So, sorry, sorry. Same place. Generally, as Armand is, south side? We wouldn't be heading the opposite direction, right? Mm -mm. 
You said we've we've walked up, right? We've like made our way towards it. <clears throat> You're heading in that direction, okay. and you know those of you that know of the location is generally in the same direction you're traveling. He might be heading to the same place for all we know. Mm. I mean, it sounds like a very esteemed location. Yeah, no better joint in the entirety of Basaras. So you've been there. Yeah, I like to go and hang out occasionally, you know? It's nice when you have a local place that you can just kind of be familiar with and people are familiar with you. Does mm. everyone there know your name? <laughs> uh, <laughs> are they always <laughs> glad you came? I don't know, I don't even always know, you know. I feel like I'm learning so much about you so quickly. <laughs> Do they have a dress code? Are we underdressed or overdressed? Oh, we're, can, we're overdressed. Do you need a jacket? Oh. You definitely don't need a jacket. You can like, Get stuff there from the gift shop that'll <gasps> let you fit in. I'm not even sure you need shoes. Okay. Clothes? Yeah. Wow. There's they, the gift shop. Is this like the type of place where the um the servers dress up to look like? I, I yes, <laughs> it is. I feel like I feel like this is one of those things you just have to see. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. You're absolutely right. No more about this. You'll all see it for yourselves. Let's go. Yeah. All right. As long as you know. I, d- I don't want to put a damper on anyone's good time. I just would hate to have traveled all this way only for Treshy to get away because we're having a good time at a at a theme restaurant. Uh, you know what I mean? A second to rest would not be a terrible idea. I hurt in many in a couple different ways, and I would definitely be willing to trade that hurt for a completely different kind of hurt, <laughs> uh, just for a. A quick bite, a taste of Taldor. I'd also be curious to see if the restaurant's on the south side of town and Treshy is. We'll see if the direction changes at all once we're in really close proximity, you know right? What? So this is more of a scouting mission. If, than... if this is the place where everybody does know your name, maybe we can get some recon and intel about Treshy. Maybe someone there knows his name. That is true. Maybe he's a regular. That's oh a great my. thought. Mm-hmm. Letters. Well, let's at least head in that direction, and we'll um, play it by ear. Let's go. I, I do agree oh. with Imogen. I, I, I don't want to lose him, but I'm very excited about seeing a gift shop. Oh, d- Dusk is gone. <laughs> Dusk, is, uh, Dusk has left oh, now. Okay. Or are you taking off towards <laughs> <clears throat> Very well. Walking. That I like, I'm, yeah. Okay. Uh, continuing your way in the south southwestern no, side of the city. Mm. Uh, can't, I, have, I cannot win. A very dual leap of you. I respect that. Um, pressing down the streets, uh, the bustling midday road of Basaris presents itself to you. All manner of interesting figures walking past. You can see uh, cobbled together armor pieces and bits of like jagged metal placed in a defensive way to go ahead and signal to you at immediate glance to do not touch and do not engage. And so the other, other figures that are coming along with carts and beasts of burden that are kind of pulling their way through the street, you can hear the squeaking of wooden wheels. She made me do it. <laughs> <laughs> I love looking at you, I <laughs> What does catch your attention, within a short jaunt further, is your first sight of an automaton here, amongst the roadways. You see one person walking by, and behind them, an eight-foot-tall, hulking-looking humanoid figure. Uh, The head itself seems to be somewhat uh, barely emerging from an egg-like torso, with just a singular gem in the center where a face would be. These two large, kind of, stone pillar-like arms swing side to side, while these three almost tripod-like legs clamber forward as it does. Um, Each portion of its torso and its limbs are mismatched in both materials and design. Um, You watch as it kind of stalks by. It kind of has a weird hitch with every third step. Uh, That kind of gives it an odd, almost like a a limp presentation to it as it lumbers by. I, 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 is it accompanied by anyone? There is one figure that's walking before it. You see what looks to be a, an older woman with uh, a, uh, a a wet headscarf. Looks like it was soaked recently to help keep them cool and wrapped around the face and around the neck and kind of like has caused a bunch of the cloth on their shoulders to darken with dampness. Uh, and as they kind of step to the left, you watch as it kind of follows in lockstep with them. 
if I can catch up or intercede, uh, yeah. I'd love to just run up to the automaton and mm -hmm. just say, smile a day to you. It just doesn't acknowledge you. Maybe he's shy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, wh where are you headed? I lean down, I grab a rock and I chunk it. Oh, oh, small one. Oh, no, don't, stop. Tink. It stops and you watch as the, uh, the person who's walking ahead of it turns around a bit and gives you this kind of glaring eye, or at least the direction of where you were. <laughs> she keeps on walking forward. Ah. Uh. Doesn't have those people skills that you do. No, doesn't. Did did that one look like any of your siblings? Uh, some of my uh, siblings were able to, you know, ambulate uh, in similar ways, but not exactly. No, they were a little smaller. Are you also looking for family? <laughs> not as much. No. But you know what? I might see some folks here in town that I do recognize. So yes, in a way. Okay. That one was real big. Are any of your siblings on that scale? I mean, we, we all had to travel together, so you know we were uh, lighter of foot and um, able to move a little quicker and nim more nimbler than that. But um, I've I've seen other ones that big before. Especially around here, they make them from all kinds of parts and stuff. It's all scavenged and plucked together and whatever whatever they can find. Okay, so we're looking for a guy that's a dot on the radar thing, mm -hmm. um, and we're looking for any other robots. Um, and uh, anybody else? I've interjected. I'm standing in front of the old lady and her. That's or basically the, the woman okay. and the robot. As you kind of dart to cross the path. She stops, and the automaton also stops and locks up with her. I completely ignore her, and I look at the robot. Okay. <laughs> Smiley day to you. And I'm going to try to uh, speak telepathically to him. Ooh. Okay. Uh, you speak telepathically, you say smiley day to you? Mm hmm And just like staring him down. Okay. There's no response. Mm. The woman kind of turns her head towards you. Can I help you? Oh, I was just, um, remarkable instrument you have there. Yes. Does he do anything without your go-ahead? No. Right. He doesn't speak? No. Right. He's a worker, and he works well for me, because I paid enough for him. Now, if you could please move aside. Thank you. Of course. Ask her how much! Who just burped? <laughs> <laughs> I'm down here. Holy shit. I didn't, Matt, I didn't recognize any of the workmanship or build, did I? I'll water it. I mean, just you, kind of looks kinda generic or? It looks fairly generic. Um, nothing that catches your eye. I mean, you've, you've seen a number of different automatons and automaton makes in the city, mainly from the ends uh, in the Sanyan Row, but like. You know, yeah. it, it varies based on whatever's coming through, and sometimes when the materials are are <laughs> limited, they cobble together what they can and come up with some very unique builds. Well, thanks for trying, but it does remind me there's there's some folks here that I, I do want to. After we find our target, there's some folks that I do want to talk to here. At some All point. right, sure, we can make that happen. Great, it's mm. <laughs> okay. Wish I could <laughs> smell that burp. You don't. I wish I could. <laughs> Someday. Someday. FCG. Okay. We'll get you a sense of smell and you'll regret it. <laughs> Scattered across the front of the <laughs> the dust and dirt before you, you somebody steps upon the the front kind of brick walkway at the exterior of their doorway and just empties a giant urn of liquid that just scatters across the street in front of you. <laughs> um, at about that time you also hear about two or three blocks down the way. This kind of like heavy metallic growling sound as you start seeing dust clouds kicked up, and intersecting with the main street that you're walking past, you see three uh, skirmish crawlers <laughs> kind of scoop by and 
begin to vanish into the distant sounds of the city. You see other folks kind of step out of the way as they scoot by, watch as they go, take a minute to collect themselves and then continue on with the rest of their day. Um, a short walk later, you watch as the buildings, many of which are uh, a combination of old, weathered stonework that has been here a lot longer than you expected the city possibly to have been, as well as newer, constructed structures that take all manner of dried, gathered wood and uh, smaller bits of, of sandstone and rock that have been kind of masoned together to create uh, ramshackle additions to the bare bones that the city was built upon. Um, one building stands out amongst the others. <laughs> Between the the colorful tarps and uh, multitudes of long, thin cables that mark the intersections of the various walkways and roadways, the dangling lanterns between them, the scattered bits of jagged metal that dangle on line after line that jingle in the wind like some sort of odd, nightmarish chimes. Uh, across the way, you see one massive, out-of-place building, uh, built in a classic uh, Taldore style, almost like Tudor type construct. You can see the uh, the roofs are painted far more vibrantly brown than any natural wood should be. The exterior is, you can see the cracks that have been patched time and time again and then repainted over. A coloration that denotes not a, a natural build, but something that is trying to desperately keep up with the age of time. Like, a, like an older man trying to put on makeup to prevent from showing his wrinkles. Um, on the outside of this, uh, you can already hear music curling from the inside. Uh, it's almost like a, like a jaunty violin with a faint drum kind of pop, 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 pop. Uh, there's some hitching posts immediately out front, past a couple of tents, um, and the front double doors, and it is like, like a hinged double door that enters the front. Uh, you can just barely see from the interior a faint bit of flickering lantern light. Whatever sense of irony any of you may still hold. <laughs> Abandon it now, it will serve you not inside. <laughs> Welcome to a Taste of Taldore! <sighs> you step inside, and as the doors woof, swing open, woof, 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 behind you, immediately the smells catch you. The smells are a, a unique mingling of all sorts of, of baked, Breads and sweets, uh, a mixture of cooked meats and and rolled uh, lettuce-based kind of a, a meat-packed dishes. Uh, you can see there is a bit of of almost an incense brazier on the opposite end that is burning and filling this kind of gentle smoke. And it, it's a bunch of things that individually are good smells, but when they mix <laughs> together, it creates this almost Sephora-like blast oh, uh, no. uh, of, from all different directions. <laughs> As soon as you step through, there, there are a, a, a smattering of tables of all different of makes and designs, all round, but you can see from different carpenters, there is not a single thread of, of presentation to these tables. Some with like melted wax and candles in the center of it, uh, tankards and uh, manner of, of, of decor that is reminiscent of non marquesian make. Uh, you can see banners and tapestries that hang from the, the high central walls that themselves depict uh, decently created pieces of art that some look like they're portions of maps, others are landscapes that some of you may find somewhat familiar if you took long to look upon it. Um, but in the open way, there is a, uh, a stairway that leads to a secondary balcony with a higher up table where you imagine the more esteemed customers may stay for a meal, um, overlooking the rest of the chamber. Um, here, you can immediately tell the clientele a bit sparse, um, <laughs> especially for first thing in the morning. No more than maybe like seven individuals that are currently here. There was one bartender across the way, but you do see three servers are racing around and conversing merrily with the individuals. One of which you see is a, a young woman dressed in fine armor and like red silks, almost like a long robe with gold. Uh, you watch as she approaches and serves a dish to a couple of customers and says, "And that." It's how Taldore greets the greats of the world and steps back and continues back into, the, into the, the far chamber to retrieve another meal while somebody else, you could see this man with a big, bushy, dark beard, his like sun-weathered skin wearing a, a large, uh, kind of haphazardly made bronze crown, like a king's crown on his head as he wields a large sword that he kind of drags behind them that you can tell is more for show than not. Subs up to another table and goes, 
And what, pray tell, do you wish to ask of King Dressig? No way! Oh no. By that I mean, what would you like to drink? <laughs> <laughs> and you see two gentlemen sitting at the table. That's so um, uh, I'm just going to have uh, have some water for me. Uh, what do you want? Like, what? I would like uh, just whatever beers you have on tap. Ha! Ha 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 ha! May the darkness of my reign bring you the drinks you require. <laughs> he turns around and drags the sword back over to the bar and begins to set his orders in there. Um, you can see now, uh, the music is not sourceless. There is a music box that is dangling from a rope that is kind of wrapped across it in two different directions that just kind of sits, slightly sifting from the wind as it occasionally blows in, that appears to be producing a louder sound than you expect, though maybe not quite the, the most on-key at times. Uh, and occasionally you watch as one of these servers has to walk up to it when the music stops and wind it for a second before it continues to emit its uh, beautiful, uh, atmospheric uh, song choices. Mm. Um, you, as you stand there watching, another door opens, and the, uh, the third server comes through. Uh, a tall Goliath figure, you know, half giant in blood, wearing deep blues and whites. His face painted like a blue and white coloration, and himself wearing this tall crown of what looks to have been handcrafted clay, uh, almost like icicles that point upward. Though some of them chipped and broken in places, and you can see it's have like been affixed and with wire in one or two spaces. Um, who turns to another table before looking at you? Ha! And who disturbs the realm of Erevon the Rhine Lord? Oh, oh no! Oh, yes! Oh, we, we surrender! Then you shall surrender into my realm by the great mirror of ever watching. How many is in your party? There's going to be one, two, three, four, eight. 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 <clears throat> Erevon requires two more chairs! <laughs> <laughs> and grabs two more chairs and drags them behind over to a table. Sets them up. Or oh. are these historical figures? Uh, it's to a point. <laughs> are they accurate? No. <laughs> are you from are there? Uh, yeah. Orm and I both are. Oh my goodness! Do they actually have those kinds of uh, fruity drinks? That what is it? What are the 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 fruity drinks? The the, the, we do the have fruity drinks. Uh, I do wish to order drinks. of the the Tadori Great Rum Extravaganza. That's the one. <laughs> mm. oh my God. Do you all drink that? Where you're from? Is that like your your like the the the, the Ashari drink? <sighs> They bring that one in the fishbowl, right? Pretty much stick to keto. <laughs> pie, but, um, my lord, we do humbly request your cocktail menu as quickly as possible. Thank you, my liege. Ah, well mannered this one. He might survive my frozen death still. No. Scary. Waters. Oh. Ooh. Yeah, have a seat. And goes in and pulls out the chairs. And you can see you're seated uh, behind this this massive, beautiful looking mirror that has these kind of like intertwined ivy carving around the exterior of it. It has this kind of beautiful mid-forest aesthetic to it. Um it's fa it's it's kind of a little off-kilter, kind of facing towards the wall slightly, but like you're you're mostly before it and to the side. Um as Erevon turns back after you all have your seat. I decree that you will uh, have your menu shortly. And turns around and heads back to the bar. You started talking differently. Why did you do that? Well, when in Taldore, you know. <laughs> how, how are we supposed to talk here? Um, I don't know. How do people talk where you come from? Uh, kind of like this. I know. It seems like they're very bombastic no. and yeah, it's uh, bombastic. Really loud enthusiastic. I mean, I'm not a very good actor or orator, so maybe that's just me. Or I don't know. It feels pretty accurate to me. Is that what they good sounded man. like in Whitestone? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Wow. I mean, uh, people didn't go around with such, you know, enthusiasm on a day-to-day -day basis, of mm -hmm. course. But uh, I feel like, you know, he's playing it up a little bit for the environment. But if you did walk around with enthusiasm, I'm just really curious. What would what would the vibe be? <laughs> Maybe you'll see later. Do you see any, um, uh, you know, knickknacks or, or design from where you're from, from Whitestone? I look around. Is there is there any Whitestone representation? Make a perception check for me. Okay. What are my stats? They're a lot lower There's than pages. <laughs> oh, uh-huh. Uh, 23. 23. Wow. 20, two. 
22. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, glancing around, you do see of the many tapestries that are based around here, some of which that one has what looks like a, a triangular mountain with like two hammers that cross over the front. Uh, you glance around and see one that shows the crest of Amon. Uh, and then one you do see has a, a, a tree frame that kind of carries upward its roots and its branches reaching out with a sun uh, above it. And you know this to be the crest of the count, the Chamber of Whitestone. Fully accurate, or is it the Legoland version like everything else? <laughs> I, of, a, of, a, of your keen perception, you will notice that it is missing uh, two of the stars. Um, the coloration's off a bit, and it looks like it's been sun bleached to a point where the blue has now come to like a like a faded teal. Mm. Yeah, they, they haven't updated it in like 75 years, but um, that's <laughs> all the Whitestone crest right there. Huh. So I, I, I've heard of King Druseg, but who's who's our guy supposed to be? Oh yeah, was it some wizard I mean, or something? I, I, don't I genuinely know. fade. Erebon demands you decide on what you have to drink Aragorn. before you are frozen for all eternity. <laughs> who are you, and what what have you done? I am Erevon, the Rhyme Lord. Rhyme Lord. I am a great elemental deity that broke forth from the realm of ice and froze all of Tal'Dorei for many years oh, before no. I was oh. is this true? sundered and sent back to my realm. But there I wait, plotting to bring you the finest in service here at A Taste of Tal'Dorei. That part is true. That part is true. That's impressive. Good. Yeah. Is this the kind of place where they cook the food at the table, or is that something? Is that not this place? I think if you get like the some of the platters and of things that they'll. If do you that. if you look on, the, there are stars next to the ones in the menu that have a presentation. Oh, Thank you. A little more the practice, but I, they're, they're worth it. Trust me. We should do. We should do. Yeah, you should do one of the presentations. Yes, yeah. There's also yeah, shareable for the whole table. Yes, yes, yes. Just get four people to get <laughs> In like. your head. Let's do one of those. I want one of the, the ones that come in the big trough bowls. Do you want do you want like a fire vibe or an ice vibe? I'm a big fan of the ice vibe. Well, Although they, they got a few. They have a sampler platter that's the Chroma Conclave. Ooh. Get a little bit of everything. Yeah, I mean, Teldor is a big place. Is there any Zephra uh, or Shari themed drinks on this cocktail menu? On the, on the cocktail menu, there is what's called an Ashari Breezer. Ooh. Um, oh, what the fuck? <laughs> I was literally in my head, too. That's what I was. Uh, we'll take eight Ashari Breezers. Yes. Of course. Well, 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 well. Cursed druid start. magic. Okay, to start. I will have my revenge. Also, a Thordox uh, pepper poppers, please. I'll see if we have any left. What, is a, what is a disappearing Singorn sausage? <laughs> 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 That's for our late night clientele. <laughs> for the dinner menu only. Cool, cool. Oh, how late are you open till each day? We don't close. Oh, 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 oh shit! We came at the wrong time. <laughs> well, well, there's like a more limited menu when, as you get later, but they do have special things on it. Okay. Mm -hmm. I just sort of glance back over at Imogen. Oh, yeah, in your head. Will you check the orb? Mm, just kind of under the table. What are you doing? Just, I need, oh. it's a little, the glare from the, the spotlights in here, I just need to see. I should probably mention While this. While she's doing this. that, I'm just going to reach back and touch the mirror and see if it's double-sided, <laughs> see if there's a reflection of my own finger up close. You okay. know how you can tell if it's a double-sided mirror? Make a perception check. Mm. Grunk. Thirteen. Thirteen. Uh, I mean, it's hard to tell. Uh, it, it appears to, it's a beautiful mirror. Like, like of all the things that are here, this one, probably a lot of the money went into this. Whoever found it was very proud to put it on display. Oh, um, it has like you know, a little bit of kind of a smear on it, but it has the, this, this beautiful kind of twisting briar-like metallic sculpture frame to it. And it's about like six feet tall. Um, it's a mirror. Yeah, and it's it's affixed to the wall there. You're uncertain as to what the historical significance is of it, with your limited understanding of Taldor history. At the very least, it looks pretty. Okay. Um, but you're uncertain if it's double sided or not. Okay. I hope that you'll all allow me to treat you for this one. Um, I really do appreciate you all coming to my aid. That's very kind of you. Um, and this is nice because it gives us an opportunity to like. Uh, you know, you don't seem like you're in a hurry or anything, but you're looking for family? Well, it's kind of. I, I'm looking for people that helped me. Helped you? How? Well, through the Feywild. Through the Feywild? 
Like they in the Feywild mm -hmm. or to get here? Both. They, oh. you know, they show me around and then they help me find a way back here. I don't know if I made the right decision leaving or not, but, you know, they were very kind to me. Who, who are they? Um, I have, uh, and I pull out, I have a little uh, locket and I open up and there's a picture. Of one person or two? Of two. Okay, what are they? Of. There are two figures. <laughs> um, well, they're kind of like a, a, a gently drawn painted portrait. Um, both of them are unfamiliar to all of you except for you. <gasps> lore, lore. <gasps> there is two familiar <gasps> portraits of the Callaway parents that birthed you. The Callaway parents? Her parents. Mm -hmm. <gasps> oh. 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 How do you know them? In, from the Feywild. Do you know them? Yes. Yes, those are my parents. <laughs> what? Wait, I don't know. I don't know. I don't understand. What do you mean you saw them in the, in in the Feywild? Yeah. They helped me get back to this other side. Recently? Well, time's a little fucky, but well, yeah. Cool. I mean, <laughs> I, 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 yeah. I don't see it. Or, yeah, I've been and and sure. I know that they're somewhere around here. They're here? I think so. Did they you came, know that? They came through with you? They, we got separated. How? Here in town. I don't know, I don't know how fave bullshit works. But did you get pulled apart there or here? <laughs> on, on the way, through the portal. Okay, wait, so like some portals? context. Were you running from something? Was it a, like a, a very leisurely trip? Were you in a rush? Yeah, I mean, yes. I, I'm, okay, so. I was there, and it was amazing, and it was incredible, but it's really fucking scary over there. Oh. There's all sorts of politics and, and like, lights everywhere. It's beautiful and amazing, and I just wanted to be there forever, but also, I don't know how much time has passed since I was went there or since I've come back, and so this really lovely couple took me under their wing and showed me around, and show me how to get back. But I guess the portals are just unpredictable. Oh shit. They're your parents? Yes, yes. May I see that a little closer? Yeah. Did they talk about their daughter? No. They didn't say anything about having a daughter. Ooh. They told me that they felt like, you know, I, it's not important. But it's, it's, do you know where they are? I, I don't know where they are and, and I've, I've been looking for them, but I, maybe they just forgot. Cause it's been a, a, a very long time since I've seen them. Well, you don't seem like a kind of person that somebody would just forget. Well, um, I just, do they look the same in the picture, older or younger than I remember them? These particular portraits are copies of portraits that you recall at a young age. So these are them in their prime. Well, this is this is Mama Birdie, <laughs> and this is Papa Ollie. Birdie and Ollie. And they're very wonderful, but I, I haven't seen them in, in a very, very long time. How long? Probably about, oh, maybe like 90 years. Oh. So, so something like that. Fern, is that how they looked when you last saw them, or, or are they? It's hard to. Yes, but you know this is a this is this is a drawing, so they could look. Did they look like this? Yeah, a little older. Did did you do this wonderful drawing, or did they give it to you? I I got it from them. 
They gave you a drawing of themselves okay. to remember them, to find them. Yeah, you were that were close you? with them. With them. How long were you in the Feywild? That do you know? Mm. I feel like I have lived a thousand different lifetimes in there, or maybe, or maybe just one long one. Also, maybe we covered this and I missed it. Where were you before? Yeah, maybe start at the top and sort of take us through. It's all, <laughs> no, I don't know. Time dilates weird and memory is weird. And that's why the things, these things that I have on me, the sword, the portraits and them, they're the only things that really feel real still. You feel real. Does she feel real? Yeah, sure. You feel real? Yeah. Well, that's good. Can I use my hunter's bane to look at Dusk with knowing that she's been in the Feywild that long and just see if I notice anything about her, her clothes, her rapier, anything that sticks out as like Fey? Uh, make a perception check. Yeah. Woo! Where are those original dice? <laughs> Shout out Cody Jacobson. Uh, fuck, that's a one. <laughs> oh my god. Hey. It's as good as a Werther's original. Uh, oh, but I have advantage. Because that's true. That's true. Oh, that's cocked. That's cocked. 15, 20. That is it. Uh, 14. 14. I mean, the weapon that uh, Dusk carries definitely has a a face-centric design to it. It has a, a, a natural, a, a beautiful but but natural design. The the hilt flows, the crystals kind of like give this natural sense to it. it you'd almost feel like it was pulled from the earth if you couldn't see like the finer details that were handcrafted. Um, yeah, there there is a hint of fey essence to the way they present themselves. Like design and clothing has some you know elements to the uh, the overall presentation of the smaller details. Cool. Maybe you have been gone for like a hundred years. Maybe we can we can do like a little test or like um do like a little survey to see what uh, world events uh, you know you remember and although you, you you don't remember a lot, so maybe that's maybe that's a bad idea. Do you remember being a little kid? Do you have any little kid memories? Um, yeah, but also I don't really process them chronologically. Oh. You know, um, are you from I the totally future? Understand. You do. It's just, it's, it's kind of how time works, I guess. Where, where we're from, it's kind of. Well, I think. Sorry, Fern, but I think when people from here go there for a brief time, like there's a little bit of soupiness, but maybe if you go for a long time. It's exponential. Like it was gumbo. Over a very long time. A heavy oh. table hits the center of the table, and there you can see upon it, uh, or a plate hits the center of the table, and you can see a cluster of small like dough balls. As Erevan takes a deep breath, <laughs> and just breathes a gout of flame that sprays across and kind of singes the exterior of it. Oh, that's <laughs> It takes a lot for an ice being to breathe fire. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> now enjoy the conclave, Thor Dax, fire peppers. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. And your uh, breezers. <clears throat> Puts the drinks out there. Oh, it's blended. Please describe the presentation of the Ashari breezer. Yes. There wasn't a star next to those. Hmm? Oh. Just in it's the just where you ordered just something in the that doesn't have a star. Maybe you could get a souvenir <laughs> cup. <laughs> is it? Yes, it is. Can we, can we get a souvenir cup? I wanted a souvenir cup that we could get. Does it have a flashy light cube so in it? What's it, like? it What's it look like? Is what he said. What's it look like? There, there are souvenir tankards you could take with you on the way out. They um. I, I will bring some if you'd like to see at the right. end of your meal. <laughs> yeah, it's blended, right? Yeah. But you as a DM, what do they look like? He hasn't presented them yet. Oh, I thought you said here's all the Ashari breezers. The sherry breezers are the drinks. Yeah. Oh yeah. But yeah, they don't come in. They don't come in like collectors' cups. <laughs> right. It's just a drink. 
Um, right. Yeah. Is it blue? Oh, <laughs> oh, she was asking for the coloration of the drink. Yeah, I'm no. sorry. I was misunderstood the scenario. Yeah. So no. Know if there's umbrellas. Are there little like uh, hang right, gliders? So, so, for the hang gliders in them. So for the, for, for the breezers, they're they're inside the small clay mugs, and at the very top you can see it's like a it's like a faint bluish green, almost like like a Midori, you know, kind of coloration to it. Um, and it has a bit of fizz to it. You can see it's kind of like popping with some sort of aerated, uh, uh, you know, carbonated. yeah, it's been carbonated. You just killed me and brought me back to life. I thought he was like. It's just a small clay. It's a carpenter's cup. <laughs> <laughs> Zephyr um, doesn't warrant a fancy drink, okay. <laughs> but it's beautiful. It is. It's beautiful, and it's it's not quite as overt. But when you take a look at the subtleties of it, it's quite nice. Okay. Wow. It looks um, really natural in your in your hands. I can tell it. It boy, really speaks to where you're from. No mm. place like home, <laughs> especially this place. <laughs> Ding, 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 ding. A big oh. bell, the bar begins ringing loudly, and the music from the music box immediately stops, and someone gets out a horn and goes, Here we go. Oh, yeah. And you watch, and everyone turns around, kind of, not everyone, a few people turn around and look, and a number of them are like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> just drink heavily. And the, uh, the the barkeep behind you, you can see, is in a, uh, an orcish gentleman stands up at the top and goes, Harkon to all friends here! It looks like a great conflict comes to the taste of Tal'Dorei. There's a show. A historical moment. There's a show. There's a show. And you see <laughs> from behind one of like the Run. the doorways that has a, a large piece of cloth that just kind of protects it. You see the the, the individual dressed as Dursig is like putting on some armor <laughs> and comes out with a sword that is like plainly like not sharp at all and goes, "Aha! This realm is mine to rule." And I will, you shush your mouth or be slain by the Dark King, Warindrasig! Oh, oh no! He's, he's calling you out. <sighs> now, kneel before me! And suddenly behind, do not kneel before him! You see the woman who was going for, <laughs> for the first the table goes, he is but an imposter! A terrible plague upon the free peoples of our land! And the guy dresses war and turns and goes, Zantaldori! Oh. As his beard kind of loosely comes off at one point, he slaps it back onto his chin. Goes, Indeed, I will free the great peoples of this land, and you will be nothing but a dark echo in the annals of history. He goes, Then show me your strength. And he pulls his blade out, and she goes, Yeah, and pulls her blade out, and you can see kind of whoa, 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 in a place. The uh, the orc on the on the counter gets down below and pulls out a quick fiddle from behind and starts like starts so like fiddling along with it. The two are going ting, 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 ting in a circle, just like just the most awkward, repetitive, non-dangerous swinging of blades in a big circle in the middle. There's a, a couple of uh, of crawler gang members and full guy are like. Aah! Stab her in the throat! And the guy's like, cut off his balls! And they're just like, ching, ching, cling! He knocks the blade out of her hand. Ah! And it falls to the guy and clang, 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 clang. And everyone's like, <gasps> and someone goes, I've seen this before, and just has a big swig. <laughs> On the ground, she looks and puts her eyes up, and you watch as one of the baubles from the ceiling begins to glow a beam of light upon her face. <laughs> the spotlight that kicks in, they're on the nude day performance they're doing now, the melodrama at noon, looks up. Oh, oh, but the great prime deities give your blessings upon me so I might guide the free peoples to true freedom. As King Drusig pulls his blade up, and then the fiddle stops, and another Crank behind the counter begins to turn, and you hear this like crackling sound of voices going, oh, and the squeaking of a ratchet as another sword is lowered on a rope <laughs> from the ceiling. Grabs the sword, looks at it as King Drusik is slowly recoiling, pulling his blade back, going, no! She pulls the blade from the rope, which takes a second to kind of pull it free safely before turning around and very slowly bringing it to his throat and kind of touching it there, and he goes, ah! Oh! Oh, oh, she got it. Oh, I'll, I'll transfer suffering and take half the damage. <laughs> <laughs> Good on you. I was really buying the whole thing. <laughs> so in it. He slaps his hand to his to his neck and then pulls it away, and there's just like a smattering of some sort of like red condiment. He goes, Ugh. 
It seems <laughs> you were indeed the chosen king. And he falls to the ground, and she looks at her blade and looks down at him. I am no king. I am a sovereign. Oh, God. And there's this awkward pause. She stands up. Um, you've seen this before? Oh yeah, they have not changed the script one iota. I almost kind of missed this, does actually. It, does it get better or worse with the rewatch? Oh, so much worse and so much better at the same time. <laughs> I love the theater! <laughs> <laughs> they both stand up, they grab each other's hands and give a, a bow, and you can see like in their faces, they're just soulless at this point. <laughs> this is probably the 600th time they've done this, and they know you don't care, and they finish. Keep it fresh. They turn around and they go back to serving the tables they've been assigned. As Erevan the Rhyme Lord goes back and like checks his makeup in the mirror and comes back. Ah, what else do you need from the Rhyme Lord? Um, I checked the ball a little bit ago. Mm -hmm. Is the ball fine? Anything moving on it yet? No shifting. No. No shifting. Okay. We still have time. So south of this place. Do you have any specials on the cocktail menu right now? Something seasonal, my lord. Let me check. And he goes back to the bar and then comes back for a second. Uh, there is the uh, the Winter's Crest mixer. Um, if you would like something with a bit more of a, a holiday spice to it, I'm feeling festive. How far off from the time frame of Winter's Crest are we at this point? Oh, you are in Cyan Star, the fourteenth. So you are like you're. The equivalent of like October. You're a few months away from okay. even that even being a thing. Earlier and earlier in the year. <laughs> winter's Crest crawl. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's always Winter's Crest somewhere. <laughs> Is that what you want? Oh yes, please. All right. Thank you. Darts off. As this amazing as as that was, I I kind of want to hear more about about this parent yes, connection. I mean. Yes, uh, restaurant's very distracting. distracting. It's incredible, though. I really just love it here. He's popping because... here, run right through us too. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. Let me try one real quick. Um, well, I'll, 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 I'll just do the the word search here I'll on the menu to give here. you guys some privacy. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, so cloud top. How? You, what did you do with them? Do you, do you know? I just have a lot of fleeting impressions of being so lost. I think I was probably before I went to the Feywild too, and then being found and having people to help me navigate that world. Yeah. Because it's terrible and beautiful, Yeah. right? Yeah. Well, well, what were they like? They were very sweet. You don't, do you remember them at all? Um, a, a little bit. I, I was very young when they left and they left me with my grandmother to keep me safe, but with your grandmother? Mm-hmm. She lives there, and she's my best friend, and I, they left because they had to do something very important. I don't know what it was, but I, I, I've been looking for them. So, this feels like something. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I know that you all have your business to take care of, but, but I mean, maybe on the way, you know, we can help each other find them. Well, you know, speaking of the business that we are on, it, to get you up to speed a little bit, the man we are chasing uh, had some dubious dealings with entities from the Realm. That's right. Uh, he worked with this like creepy and but kind of svelte man um, <laughs> called the Nightmare King, and He's a bit um, like a like a shoelace. Yes, yes, little piece of Alfredo. Fancy suit. Mm -hmm. 
And um, and then and then we followed that trail, and it led us to uh, uh the, the Shade Mother. Yes, and they were all like, "Ooh, Shade Mother, we love you, we worship you." And she was like this big, um, half woman, half slug. Which part was the woman and which part <laughs> was the slug? Excellent question. I should have specified the top half was the woman, the back half was very sluggy. Yeah. But by percentage, though, it was more like you know, 20, 80. But yeah, yes. a lot more yeah. bug than woman. Yeah. This is really far away, too. We actually just rolled into town, so this happened a long ship ride back. Those gentlemen who were chasing you, Dusk, they were bad, right? I assume so. All right. It's a fine assumption in this place. Uh, this is not the safest place that you can imagine. There's a lot of conflicting <laughs> needs and uh, affiliations. Mean. And they jumped you, right? Inside check. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's 20, 25. Yeah, yeah. That's spicy. Uh, actually, I get to get an advantage. Oh, it was a one, yeah. which I get to reroll. <laughs> It's another one. Oh, wow. But, uh, it was uh, at advantage. Like, to take the higher of the three rolls. So it's 25. Yeah, they jumped me. Zach, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. uh, But the thing is, is that, I mean, around here, everybody's just kind of desperate, you know? So the thing is, is they might be bad and that they were trying to take my stuff, but. I, I don't know, I, I might have done worse things to get by and to survive in this area. I don't know. Yeah, I'm not wrong. They seem to be trying to kill you, so, I mean. Yeah, getting by is hard to do. Can I see that locket real quick? I just want to take a look at it. Good, and mama, mama birdie. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, mm-hmm. Yep, yeah. Is this what they look like when you saw them last? Yes, it is. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. Okay. There yeah. you go. I can't believe I didn't see it. You look so much like them. I just, this is so bizarre. I just, that, that, that we <gasps> happened to, maybe they were looking for you. Maybe that's why they're in this area. So, so they're in this area? They're here? I think so. <gasps> I've been asking around. I've been here for a couple weeks. Wait, and what makes you think that they're here? Because that's where we got dumped out together. We got separated, but I assume that it was like in the same general area. You saw the boots on the ground here in Ambassadors? No, it was when they were going through the portal. It's but like how do you know the portal team. didn't send them out somewhere in Taldore? Send people a lot of places in a lot of ways. They are not reliable. Okay, well, at I all. just need to be a little bit optimistic here. Yeah, could, yeah, could, yes, could yes, yes. Dump them here. They could, they could be here. They it's could totally the closest be. thing. And the fact that I just ran into you. Ah, uh, what are the odds? This just feels serendipitous. Mm. I just How think, I think. I think they're here. I think they're here, and I think we're gonna find them. What were they, um, if you're not sure what they were looking for, what were they up to um, or, or interested in? Like, were they, I don't know, collecting flora and fauna? Were they looking for, like, we, did they have any goals? Did they tell you, like, where, where we might find them? Did they have a favorite type of food that we could go check at those restaurants? I mean, they said they were really important in the courts. Oh, yes. Very, very, very important. In we're the courts? Very, we're very, yes. Like, they, judicial court? No, the, the Seely court. My, my family is pretty, kind of a big deal. <gasps> You're fancy. Well, what does that mean? Like your royalty? Well, I mean, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. The C the Seely Court. Yeah. Okay. Your, your princess. That's a lot of politics. Well, I don't yeah, know if I, I like if it. I would be a princess necessarily. Well, you're a princess. No, 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 no. Oh, sure. I mean, my parents would call me that. <laughs> but. Are you fucking serious? You're a princess. I mean, I 
Are you Princess Bird? I certainly could be. You can call me that. For sure. I mean, I didn't know they were like royalty, royalty. Like, I just know that they're. Now I feel bad for being well, fucking I mean, like I shitty mean, to Dorian. You know, they're they're. <laughs> we don't necessarily she have like a, like a like a hierarchy, like king or queen. No, it's not necessarily like, that. It's just we're just very well known. We're just like a very well known family. This feels so complicated. Yeah. yeah. Be like an influencer. And my my aunties <laughs> my aunties work at the court. <laughs> Um, I check yeah. your. Uh, thankfully, it has not shifted. Okay. Why? Why would they leave the Fey Realm if they if they're so important and and, and high up in well, the echelons? Of... I because they're they only were on a very 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 important mission. You are? No, my parents were. They oh. had to. They had to leave. That's why they had to leave me with my grandmother because they had something very 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 important to do. In what where? Do you, yes. I don't know. But that was ninety years ago. Well, I. And you met maybe. Her with them. What if? What if? What if she was the was mission. there? The mission. Yes. How did you meet them? Do you remember? Do you have any siblings? Such an unreliable narrator. <laughs> I'm no. sorry. <laughs> not I, I know wish of. I had <laughs> answers too. You're, sorry. You're not very sorry. um. Where did you, I saw you do a little bit of magic. Where do you get your powers from? I clocked the tattoo that you have. Mm -hmm. I have one that's similar to it. Oh shit! Is it covered or uncovered? It's uh, it's uncovered. You can see like part of it peeking out. Fuck it's, yeah! Is it moon waves. Stuff? It's waves oh, that wait. terminates in geometric shapes. Ooh! Is that it's how close is it? Same to but different. That's cool. Do you remember getting it? Mm -mm. Oh. Do you? Do I remember getting mine? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Is that like a, a sign of the Ashari? Uh, or is it just a I think, neat tattoo? I don't know. I mean, I would say it's a coincidence, but there's, we are running into a lot of coincidences. Did you choose to get yours, or was it part of a ritual or something? No, I chose it. These waves, would they be from, like, the water Ashari? Uh, I mean, they're invisible, because this is D&D. Are they, do they look like water Ashari? Uh, design to me? Uh, I mean, it very well could be. You've had mm -hmm. minimal interactions directly with water or shari, especially of, of the warrior rank that take a similar, you know, tattoo spread as to what you have, but it seems like it very well could fit into a similar pattern, yeah. They're like. Do, do they do anything? Is it like a. Oh my god. <sighs> no, they're just. Um, water, yeah. They don't do anything. They mean something, but they don't do anything. Uh, what I noticed about you was your sword work. Is exquisite. Thank you. It's a good-looking uh, blade, too. Mm. You know, I, d I don't want to um. <laughs> Calm down, Aura. Jesus. <laughs> do, you, do you want? Do you want to touch it? Your arm or the sword? The touch, sword. touch it. Yes. Can I try the yeah. the hat? Yeah. I'm gonna rip off <laughs> your hat and throw it back at you. Ah! It's getting hot in here. <laughs> Do you have hair right now, by the way? No, still bald. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I was going. I don't want to speak uh, for Imogen or, or volunteer, you, oh. you know, in any way. But um, Imogen is very gifted, very capable at um, kind of peering into one's minds and thoughts. I mean, I'm no slouch and, either, but. And, and, and fresh cut grass too. But Imogen is j just. I mean, I'm, I'm equally. So different. talented and he's also here. <laughs> and, um, you know. Oh. I, I don't, but I, I know you can elaborate from there. I don't want to. Oh, uh, okay. What a terrible oh, thing shit. one must devour oh, to shit. celebrate the defeat of one such as the Rhyme Lord for one's winter crest. <laughs> How dastardly such an event is in the echoes of memory and history. Oh, woe be unto the <laughs> elemental kings. But vengeance one day shall be ours. And as he puts his hand out, he sprinkles cinnamon across this like bowl with a series of straws in it that has like a like a thick cream-based kind of rum drink that has all manner of like like it has like like red and blue and green little puff balls that look like they've been kind of soaking a little bit and kind of like get a little, little soggy. And this is kind of slosh around and he sprinkles the cinnamon on it. And then there's like a 
like a little spray of sugar on top. It's like snowfall, but he just kind of throws it, like he doesn't give a shit anymore, and then walks away. Hold him, uh, Silver. You're killing it. Dusk. Thank you kindly. I'll kill you last. Ha 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 ha. Take this. <laughs> take this back before I kill myself. Aww. Okay, there are three things I miss about this town. I'm actually admitting there are three things I miss about this town. Uh, mm. Okay. Yeah, I. Um, your gal pal really gassed you up there. And you hear in your head. Yeah, I can. Um, I can look into to your mind if you would want something like that. But I, there's no guarantee. You know, we've we've run into issues before. It it could be complicated. It. it Does anybody else hear that? She's saying something in your head. Uh, when she goes quiet like that, it's just you two. No. Oh. Yeah. We can tell that she's talking to somebody because her eyes cross while she's doing <laughs> it. <away. laughs> All right. All right, no. That's canonically what no, happens. <laughs> you do not have a flesh tongue and I do not cross my eyes, all right? Oh, I beg to do. No, 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 no. Uh, yes, 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 yes. Uh, I take a knife like a <laughs> yeah, I had a flesh tongue. Oh my god, I hate this. <laughs> Fixed. <laughs> Bad beast. <laughs> oh, it's the worst. <laughs> you should do it. She's a skilled practitioner. It might reveal something that could help you. But Only if it's too, traumatic, but, you know. it could be traumatic. I mean, as you well know. Mm -hmm. What happened to you? Uh, same shit as always. It was weird. I remembered a bunch of shit I didn't like, and it fucked me up. Enjoy. Well, when you put it that way, I don't. Maybe. No, no, no. He, no they, 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 they got a big hole in their dome. It's different. Thought outside of that, which could be viable. I have this ability for. I could potentially try to reach out and make a connection with them personally. I, and now that I've seen that locket, you know, I know what they look like. I'm, I'm familiar with their names. I, I might be able to sort of find them. Yes. Do they have to be close, or can they be anywhere? It can be anywhere. Uh, I know it's harder if they're not on this plane. So if they're in the, f then maybe I wouldn't be able to. But see, she's <gasps> very capable. <sighs> she's very capable. She's so capable. Yeah. I think we should try it. Could narrow things down. It doesn't hurt to try. It. Yeah. I look at the orb. It's not moving. All right. I'm gonna take a look around just to make sure no one's listening in. Every time. Make sure. <laughs> <laughs> just I can keep going. <laughs> just Blair witching. Why are you pretend? So I would love that so much. Please, yes. Okay. Uh, that is a uh, eleven. Eleven. Uh, you. The handful of other patrons that are here seem to be, for the most part, disinterested in your troop at the moment. Uh, except for you can see two. The two somewhat. Early day drinker, uh, crawling gang members that were cheering on the battle so ag aggressively earlier, both just kind of sitting next to each other and looking over your table with kind of a pet, a non hidden curiosity, but that's mm. about it. Did they have an, a nickname that they called you by, or was it Fern, Fernie? Princess. Princess? Holy All right. shit. Oh boy. Um, oh. And what about you? They didn't call me that, I'm just kidding. Oh, all oh, right, well, that. <laughs> they just called me Fern. They just called me Fern. Okay. Uh, um, yeah, I will. Um, yeah, come on! I will close my eyes and I'm going to try to reach out to Birdie. Okay. Oh my God. Okay. Let's take a turn. Hold on. Whoa. Well, this is happening. Okay. <clears throat> But but you won't be able to shh, hear. Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. All I can hear like it buzzes of thoughts as I start to open my mind up more. Mm -hmm. We're in a dinner theater. Birdie, I'm here with Fern and Dusk. They're both looking for you. We're in Basara. Are you close? We want to find you. 
desperately. There's a long pause. And then, responding, a voice goes, I'm sorry, um... Out of personal care and mistrust and safety, who am I speaking with? Oh my god. <laughs> I forgot to tell him who I was talking to. Did I haven't done this for him. I did! Uh, uh, oh my um, gosh! But they didn't uh, tell me where they were. They they were a little mistrustful of my voice, Shit, under, understandably. Okay. That makes sense, that makes sense. Is but there something I can tell them so that they know that, that I'm. you would know for him? Yeah. Um, 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 okay, okay. Oh my goodness, this is so exciting. Um,. Okay, say that um, Fern's window at Grandma's um, was the big round window. Um, okay. I'm trying to think of what else. Um, they remember my 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 bird, Doctor Nesbit. Nesbit. <laughs> um, um. All right. Let me. Dust, do you have anything you want to tell her? Um. It, it, oh my God, she's alive. Just. Just that, um, uh, the glade, the, the glade. Okay. I'm gonna reach up. Oh, oh, oh. and, 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 uh, uh, um, bumpers, um, and, 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 and flompers. Those are, those are all my, my, my buddies that are there. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'll start with these. Okay, and okay, okay, okay. All right. This, this is all. Those ninety-year-old makes pets? sense. I want to go there. <laughs> I'm gonna reach I don't out meet again. Bonkers, the okay. rest I'm not really into. <laughs> this is Imogen Tamalt. I'm their friend. Fern's been reminding me of her round window at Grandma's house and her bird, Doctor Nesbit. While dusk has been mentioned in the glade. Immediately the voice responds, oh my goodness, our fern, our fern! Did you hear that? Uh, you said Bosserus. We're a few days out from our next trek. We'll meet at Joe's. Joe's. <laughs> they were so happy. She was so happy to hear. She was? Yeah. And I think she was trying to call for your your dad, I, I think. Um, she said they're a few days out, but they wanted to meet here at, at, at Joe's. Does that sound familiar? Joe's? Does that sound well. familiar? Mm, both of you make a history check. Joe's. No problem. Terrible. Nope. Nope. Three, oh, four. <laughs> oh, no! Oh, you have no idea who that is. You're gonna have to ask around. <laughs> I've never went to any fucking Joe's. This is incredible. That was amazing. I just, I, I can't I, believe I, this. I can't believe this. This is so wild. This is. Long time coming. Yeah. Um, I just got so nervous. It's been a while. Thank you. Can we get eight more Ashari breezers over here, please? Oh. Yes, toast. Yeah. Oh my god. And some of the trinket bear claws. Oh. As you shout oh. this out, Ervon's over the mirror again, like applying some makeup that's kind of like sweated off the side of the cheek before snapping this little like hand case closed and spins. Right away, for I wish to treat my uh, quarry before I crush them. Ah! <laughs> then heads off to the bar. He's really committed. Committed to yeah. the bit. He's in it. Look at the bar. Look at the bar. Not moving. All right. 
I, I, thank you. Thank you so much, and I take your hands, and I, I don't know how I can possibly thank you. Is there anything that I can do for you? No, you're fine. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure, but thank you. Your friend was really right. You're amazing. <laughs> it's incredible. It's a good look, though. Oh, no, yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's very it's, aerodynamic. You have a very perfectly shaped head. <laughs> I think a little bit of like um, purple fuzz is coming into Is it really? Is it coming it's already? It's yeah. 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 It's I, it. I can feel it's a little fuzz. Nice. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so mean. Purple fuzz. It's a cold stare. Mm. Wow. Yes. See that one? Well, we gotta find out where Joe's is, right? Yeah, we should ask around. Maybe our, our waiter knows about oh, Joe's. Oh, yeah. I would say if you're gonna ask around, ask around in here. It's relatively safe. You're not gonna get into anything, but just in general, be a little bit more careful who you talk to out there. Do not, well, you're going to anyway, but try not to seem like tourists. I'm gonna run That's how over. you get robbed. I'm gonna run over to the bar tonight. I Okay. Uh, so we'll take off the paper crown. In here is fine. <laughs> oh, no, in here is fine. <laughs> the paper crown. This is, <laughs> it suits you. All right, you rush over to the bar, and there you see these, the, the orcas gentleman that kind of like emceed the battle earlier. You see him, he's um, like late 20s, a um, little bit of an early receding hairline, but the, the long hair kind of comes to a nice series of curls. Uh, at the shoulder, a very nice kind of deep green tunic that's kind of like deep cut with the uh, threads of this like thick cording uh, woven between that's pulled to a bow in the center. Big fluffy sleeves and all manner of like jewelry across the fingers. Looks up at you with these like deep set gray green eyes and just a, a very well kept grin with just a little bit of like like a, like a, a dark lip coloration across it to just emphasize the features. Kind of leans in. Hi, how can I help you? Hi, do you know of a place here called Joe's? Joe's. Joe's. Or is there anybody that goes by that name that might be have an establishment of some sort? Uh, not nothing rings a bell to me. Hold on. Dunno? Do you know of a Joe's? Dunno. And the uh, the waitress dressed as Zan Taldore comes around the corner and goes, <laughs> "Jose, you mean like um, like over in the in the ends, Jose? The Mahara Jose? Uh, maybe. What what is that? Uh, he, he's one of them. It's one of them tinkerer types. Works with a lot of the crawler gangs. Okay. In the ends over there." <sighs> Okay, in the ends. Imahara Joes? Imahara Joes. Imahara Joes? Okay. Okay. This is really promising. Oh, this is really promising. Um, the music box that you have hanging from the ceiling, yes? is that for sale? No. Why not? <laughs> Well, most of the decor here was carefully uh, imported from Taldore. These are all genuine relics oh from across God. the seas of the Osmond. Everything you see here has been acquired and carefully maintained as part of our historical collection, so we could bring to you nothing but the most authentic Taldore experience. Well, <laughs> well, may I, may I propose a trade? I happen to have items from Taldor. <gasps> specifically. Specifically. I, I pull in my fur. <laughs> I pull out an, um, an old teacup that is chipped, mm -hmm. but it has a portrait that says, where did it go? Sorry, this is taking so long. <laughs> it's a big build up. Oh, there it is. Um, it's a portrait of a woman, and underneath it, it reads the Lady of Whitestone. Mm. This is, I, I purchased 
this for a very high amount from, I've never been there, but this is from a, from a, it was from there. <laughs> Make a persuasion check. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> um, 16. 16. Takes a glance at it. Um, describe to me how you acquired this, if you don't mind. How I really acquired it? Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, this was um, taken um, when we went to Stillben um, and was around um, when we went with Opal and Dariax and I. In Kaimal? No. Uh, uh, back in, back in um, by Roden. Is it by Roden? By Roden. There we That's, go. Sorry, sorry, sorry. That's all good. By Roden. And I, I, I stole it from a gift shop. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Looks at it. I have quite a discerning eye for relics. Well, then you would know. This is authentic. It is. How did you come upon such a thing? I um, happen to know someone who, um, who somebody gave it to me. <laughs> um, it was a gift because because it was a, it was it was for my birthday. Well, uh, the, the fact that you are willing to part with this for such a establishment as this means that you respect the arts and wish to support them. Um, I think. Uh, that music box has been towards the end of its life, perhaps, and I've been looking to trade it out. I'll accept your bargain. Okay. And should you bring any other final relics around here, there are other bargains to be had, except for the mirror. The mirror stays. Okay. okay. <clears throat> what is the mirror? It is a mirror. Yeah, but where from? What is its significance? This mirror was imported from the elven city of Singorn and was said to once belong to one of the lake masters there that kept an eye upon the, the lights of Katha as it bestowed upon the magics to its people. Wow, a magical mirror. Have you ever tried to cast a spell into it? I, yes, many times, it is just a mirror. <laughs> <laughs> Have but, you ever brought it out into the moonlight? Yes, that, that was the first thing we tried. Oh, <laughs> oh. just checking. No, but good looking up, yeah, I appreciate yeah. it. <laughs> Your music box and unwraps the rope from it and hands it to you. Thank you. And you can see it's been scuffed, it's been knocked around, it definitely has a few stains on it, probably from wayward ale tossing, but it seems to function. Okay, thank you so much. Of course, thank you. Takes and very carefully lifts the teacup and like starts like cleaning it off of the little wayward scarf or piece of uh, material he wipes down the edge of the bar with. And you have a genuine piece of a taste of Taldore. What are you? What are you going to do with it? Uh, well, I, ha I have a plan. I have a plan. A plan? Yes, I have a plan for it. Chetney. You good? Do you do engraving? Of course. Um, <laughs> could I have you write to Mama Birdie and Papa Ollie on it? I mean, yes, just in, in common, plain font. Would you like more calligraphy and like filigree? <gasps> yes. Clearly. Wait, is that longer? Is that an extra charge? Not for you. Really? You give it to me for free? Yeah. Would you like anything in return? Let's just talk about it later. <laughs> <laughs> just, just one section, or like a whole, the whole side of it. I just go. This Fucking is nuts. all go nuts. This oh is your God. artistic expression. Do whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> Comic Sans is an odd choice. <laughs> <laughs> it's, just a, it's just a flurry. It's yeah. just a flurry. At which point, your final round of Ashari Breezers <laughs> arrives to the table. Uh, uh, can we? Can we? Uh, oh yes. Oh. Yes. To seeking and to finding. <laughs> yes. All right. And Taldore. Taldore. <laughs> 
<laughs> Indeed. Here are the cups you requested to look at. These are fine, but a bit pricey. But these, here, and you can see, like there are a manner of these, like like clay pressed tankards that look by intentional design, like semi-fragile, so you have to replace them fairly often if you misuse them. Um, but you can see on one side it has sculpted uh, what looks almost like a recreation of part of the architecture of the Taste of Tal'Dorei. And as it spirals up, you can see it becomes like a cluster of kind of off-brand dragon heads that kind of like look like the conclave curling up one side. Oh and then on this, oh. yeah, like it just, it's, it's not done, it's kind of slapdash and quick. Um, but it, it definitely has like way too much iconography jammed into it, and it, it looks a mess. Oh, man. You get a nice. discount on the bruise on top if you get it. I have that cup. Mm-hmm. I'll take one. Mm-hmm. How, how much? How much? Uh, um, Six uh, silver a piece. Okay, oh, yeah, yeah. I'll take one. Too long. Too. I've got you. I've got you. Oh, two of those cups. Please. No, I'm going in for one. Too. Three, three, three of those cups. Oh, four cups. Uh, ah, eight just, of those cups, oh, please. Yeah. <laughs> Discerning customers, you will make fine victims to the Rhyme Lord when I freeze your corpses and leave them an eternal winter. Thank you, you guys have been great today, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a really slow afternoon, and you've really kind of picked it up, so. <laughs> it's nothing like the gratitude of a theater major, is it? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I look at the orb. They care? Unmoved. So, now we have two places to go. Okay, well, well, okay. They said they were a few days out. A few days out, so we should. They said they were a few days out from their travels. They didn't say they were a few days away from here. They said they were a few days. I mean, I wasn't in there. Is that what you said? They said, said? we're a few days out from our travels. The the intent you gathered was it would take them a few days to. Got it. That's what I picked up. Okay. The the insinuation was that they're before their travel returned through Basarus. Okay. Okay. FCG Imogen's really good with the mice. Yeah, yeah. I know. Maybe I if you could do the same sort of well, thing I that I could do. I was trying to read okay. the the subtle jitters of your of your irises as they as they got closer and closer together, but it was distracting because of your ball your bald head. <laughs> I heard that <laughs> slap. <laughs> I think it's beautiful. Um, um, fresh cut grass. Oh. I was wondering if you would maybe just um, accompany me to um, for a quick stroll of the uh, gift shop. Yes, I would love to. Thank you Unless for asking. You're still, me. You know. No, no, no. Let's go. Okay. I don't. What do I do with these um, uh, these breezers? Just, I, I'll take. I, I, can take that. I can take. That. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take. That. I'm gonna walk with mine. I'm not. I don't, I'm not drinking no, mine. I'm getting, I no, I, I gotta finish that. I can't finish mine either. This is so much. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of alcohol. <laughs> it's noon. It's the sugar that gets you. Yeah. Um, Going okay. to gift shop? Yeah. Very All good. right. So heading to the back left of the the kind of bar area of the tavern, the singular tavern in the city, um, there is a an open doorway that leads to a small, almost like like a, a closet with an island in the center that has a walkabout. So you can just kind of like walk through in a loop and find your way back out into the tavern. As you enter inside, you can see all manner of like bare cloaks that are kind of not, you know, a little afraid of the edges, but they look like they're relatively easy to make and kind of give that that classic Taldore traveler aesthetic. Um, it's got an animal tail on the collar. Right, right, exactly. <laughs> Um, you can see more of the collector's mugs are kind of stacked up in the back. Two have fallen and kind of shattered them and kind of pushed off onto the side. Um, you can see other replicas of the same weapons of Zantaldore and King Warindrasig that are for sale, uh, smaller sized and uh, priced a little high. Um, uh, what what are you looking for specifically? I just um I really more just wanted a, an excuse to. Chat with you in private. Oh. Um, Did I do something wrong? No, no, not at all. Um, just kind of walking along, Lawton is just kind of like, like patting the t-shirts and the and the prop swords as we go, just kind of aimlessly poking. Um, it, um, you see, I'm, I'm, Imogen and I. Mm-hmm. Um, I had a, a, a little bit of um, a rough, we're kind of in a rough spot. Oh. Um, a, a little 
little, a little tiny, tiny Is bit she, of a, a fallout. Are you angry with her? N- no, she's really upset at me, and rightfully so. Why? What'd you do? Um, oh, okay. You know how I have that, that the woman, Delilah, who just kind of like talks in my head, and she was the one who like murdered me, and she's just like, ah, I'll get you, blah. Yeah, that's pretty, pretty yeah. messed up. Yeah. And you know how how have you noticed Imogen like acting a little in, intense or on edge? Of course. Well, she's been turned into different colors, and she lost her hair, yes. and she has horrible nightmares. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um. Uh, that that rock that she had. Do you um? I think I saw remember? her holding one. Yes. Um. Well, she got really attached to it, mm-hmm. and you know, of course, I didn't. I was just concerned about her and her well-being, and mm-hmm. um, her and just her mental state here recently. And I, I was afraid that maybe the the rock had something to do with it, and um. I kind of got this impulse in the back of my head that was just wanting me to to reach out and, and touch it, and I thought maybe I could discern something about it. Maybe I could I could sense a, a bit more of its origins and its purpose. And um, next thing you know, my grip locked onto it, and I, I couldn't open my fist, and I lost control of my body, and I felt the searing heat going through my arm, and and then it was over, and I looked down, and the rock had shattered, and I could hear more like feel Delilah. In, in my mind, like she was more powerful or, or satisfied, and she said something about how it was very dangerous and how I've, she's protected us from its dangers, and 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 that was it, and the, and the stone is broken. I, I, I actually still have oh. the shards oh. of it. And you think, okay, and you think she's upset with you because you broke her she is, she is upset at me. She was instantly, um, you know, in tears and... Oh, no. Um, she, she thought I had lied to her because I promised her that I wasn't going to take the rock. I just wanted to look at it and so, so she thinks that I lied. Oh, well, and, well, okay. And well, I, don't, I don't know what to do. First of all, you've already done the first step, which is just talking about it and getting it out there, okay. right? That's fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, I, do you feel any better having told me? Um, I think I did. I'm still processing it. Okay, okay. Um, because at some point, you know, you'll you'll probably need to have this conversation directly with her when she's ready to he- when she's ready to hear it. When she's on her turn. But I have right? a question for okay. you. You said you reached out and it was an impulse to squeeze it, an impulse to to break it, uh, fueled by some sort of voice in your head. Just, yes. Are you sure? Are you just just throwing it out there? Mm-hmm. There's no. You're, are you jealous of Imogen in, in any way? No. Or are do, do you, I'm not accusing you of anything. I'm just saying, like, is there anything that she does that that you that you that you wish you could do, or that uh, that, that a, a, an ability that she has, or a, or a heartbeat, or something that that she has <laughs> that that you don't have that you maybe. You know, subconsciously wanted to sort of get back at her for. No, no, it's not like that. I, the only thing I've want for Imogen is the same thing that I've always wanted for her, which is to have a life and a youth and to to go out and to see the world free of of any type of burden, like I had to. You want these things for her because you can't have them yourself. Yes, I just want her to live her best life and to protect her from something that might hurt her. And I, I, I just, that's what I thought I was doing. That's a very noble thing to want for someone. And it's, it's very generous of you to want that for her. Mm. Um, I mean, 
I'm so sorry that you're going through this, and I would love to sort of facilitate a meeting of the minds if if it, if if you'll be up for it, and maybe I could talk to her and tell her how how stressed out you are. And oh boy, you just pulled out a clump of hair there. Um, <laughs> if if with your permission, I could try to arrange a a neutral space, a safe space where you you both could talk. Okay. Um. Well, well like you said, I, I want. This will be on her terms, so, um, what should I do in the meantime? What if she never comes around? She what if will, she doesn't she want to be will. friends again? What you if know that's what? ruined? You know what I would say? I would say, um, uh, let's find a, a time when you both are in a, in a space where you can both communicate openly and freely, but not just any willy-nilly time, mm. right? Mm. Don't just go up to her and start talking about it. Make sure that she's in a in a place where she's happy and safe, she feels safe. So keep her happy. Well, I mean. And keep her safe. Oh boy. Uh, <laughs> All right. <laughs> maybe just work on yourself right now, just call Which one of these um, plastic swords do you think she'd want? Just wooden, wooden swords. I don't know if they have plastic. Yet. Doesn't strike me as a as a as a. What about the oven replica mitt? Replica sword, an oven mitt. She. Everyone can use that. I think she can. I can hide her hands. You know, if she or keep sure. them warm. Uh, does she cook? But no, I don't think so. Well, it's still nice. You can. Yeah, it says T O T on it. What do you think that means? Taste the taste of tabdor. Oh! <laughs> 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 oh no, give me your tots. <laughs> Tina, come get some tots. It says t- it says tot holder right there. <laughs> tot holder. Yeah. That's fantastic. God. That's great. I think she'll she'll appreciate this. But you know, I'll get her this pencil too. Sure, but you can't buy her happiness and you can't buy her forgiveness. But I, do I, do it anyway, because it can't hurt. Okay. <laughs> All right. Hey, you did nothing wrong. This was this was fine. It was a mistake, and you'll make up for it, and you'll be better for it on the other side. Okay. And I I, I think you're a wonderful person. Well, former person. Thank you. Fresh, fresh cut grass, and you, I, I, I hope you weren't offended by what I said at the table. You are very gifted and talented oh, as no, no, well. No. And you were trying to build yes, her no, up just, to you cover for your insecurities. Exactly. Sure, I got it. No, I feel it's fine. Okay, we're good. Okay. Nope. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Would you like a pencil as well? Yes, I would. All right. Two pencils on this pot holder, please. For silver, of purchasing later, you acquire the remainder of your knickknacks and rejoin the rest of your troop. I already have like a giant foam hat and a <laughs> scarf and uh, a terrible thing that looks like a sweatshirt, but like a jerkin style one. Mm. Um, it's like really ugly branding. It's like peeling already. You can see the letters, the decals peeling already. Would, 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 would fantasy foam hat be burlap, you think? Yeah. Oh, God! Mm. Likely. Jute. Yeah. Especially. Nice, yeah. Jute. Jute. Hat. That's, hey. that's very bastardous right there, yeah. yep. Yeah. Yep. I want to toss a quick thing in during all of that when they leave and everyone's drinking. Did you come here with that clothes or did you just purchase it? Oh, just I just they went went to the air shop and, okay. and while well, everyone is uh, yeah. rabble rousing, came, came back. I'm gonna try to I'm gonna catch Imogen's eye across the table mm-hmm. and just sort of covertly go. Yeah. Did I hear that in here? Yeah. You okay? I mean. You seem a little discouraged. Well, there's, you know, or I'm... Oh, no, I'm good, thanks. Can I be honest? <laughs> this is so dumb. Um, Lauden and I have sort of a, a a bit of a, a falling out. <laughs> um, a couple of days ago, because that's how long you've seemed a little, little withdrawn, which is okay. I mean, you know, you're private, but yeah. You can tell. Um, you know, she 
She just sort of, um... Did... She did something that broke my trust. And, um... You know, it's weird, because the, the longer it goes after, it feels like almost it was a good thing that she did, but I can't tell her that yet. Because... I don't know. And then as soon as we get here, you know, dusk shows up and all of a sudden, like, I'm hurting mm. and Laudna's just living it up with this new person. Smiling and laughing like she doesn't even care that we had a fight. So, sorry, that was loud in your head and I apologize. It's cool, it's cool. And now I'm bald, but that's fine. I like it and stuff. So, yeah, well, I guess I'm a little distraught or... On, on that, I mean, you know, we figured out the blue thing. I'm sure we'll figure out the head thing. You have really fabulous cheekbones, <laughs> so you're selling it. But I'm sure we'll fix it. Yeah. I mean, fuzz is its already... It, well, there was no fuzz. And yeah, I'm like, we're not talking, but I'm still touching my head and looking at <laughs> <in> it. <a way. laughs> or I'm just nodding across the table. There was no fuzz right away, and there's already fuzz, so I think that's a good sign, because hair doesn't normally grow back that fast. <laughs> Back to the point. Yeah. I could definitely be wrong. I, I haven't known you that long, but I watch you and Lana together, and you guys are so close. I feel like, you know, you get, I, I see you get down on yourself, and I think maybe it's just coloring your thinking a little bit. I mean, when you have a falling out with a friend, you, I don't know. I think breathe through it. She. That dead lady's got a lot of love in her heart. I know. She's got a really good heart. Also, I don't know if I can listen to this guy's acting much longer. Also, <laughs> you saved that elf's life. And I see you kicking yourself, but you saved their life. And also, you just did an amazing thing for Fern. That was a good thing you did. She seemed really happy. Let that sink in. Yeah. Thank Brought you. Brought a smile to my face. <laughs> I hope everything's all right with them. I hope that it's a happy reunion. You know, look through it, but, you know, when you're ready, talk to her. I know. I know. I'm a little embarrassed, but, yeah. She won't care, I don't think. And also, I'm the new guy, but my door's always open. Thank you. The Rhyme Lord <laughs> he has to deal with the coming lunch rush, so we need you to leave. Got it. Oh, we gotta go? Yeah. Well, well you know, he's. Oh. Turn around. Turnover. Mm -hmm. um, Imogen. I, I got you. I was, I, I was in the gift shop, and I saw this pot holder and thought of you. It's a, it's a tot on it. Tot it's, holder. It's a tot. Yes, and this pencil, it's its purple like your once hair. <laughs> um, I check the ball. Oh. The ball <gasps> is the same. Uh. <laughs> Are you wearing one of everything? You've got like head to toe mm -hmm. outfitted. Mm -hmm. Always good to support the arts. Oh, I couldn't agree more. <laughs> Shit, I gotta go get some stuff. I'll be back. Right. <laughs> Do you also stock up? No, fuck that. Okay. <laughs> so real quick, Orin bolts to the gift shop and buys two toy swords. Okay, you got it. That'll be two silver. You got it. Will you get like a, a t-shirt or something? <laughs> That's Do they make t-shirts? Four silver. Do they have a, <laughs> they have a set of uh, Taste of Tal'Dorei cutlery? Uh, oddly, no. Shit! Imogen wanted a t-shirt. I'd like to get one of the signs <laughs> that says, how do you want to do this? Gonna make it <laughs> Those are back ordered. <laughs> but they find one that's hidden in the back, so yeah, you can get it. Yay! 
I bring back image in a t-shirt that says white stone is for lovers. <laughs> wow. That's an, uh, Gets darker and darker. <laughs> Always. Why did I open myself to this? <laughs> Do we, are we um, capable of tracking down this, this our, our mark today? I mean, does that count as a short rest out of curiosity? Oh, yes. Uh, yeah, you guys have Thank been. Fuck yes! Oh. Have some drinks, have some meals, have some conversations, enjoyed some fine performance arts. Uh, yeah, you've had a short rest, so you can oh, take that. Die real quick. The short rest is in the mid jewel. Uh -huh. Every time. Oh, yeah. yeah. Just take that. Right. 22 points on two. Points. Hell yeah, dude. Oh, I'm having a or something. Okay. Now, where are you off to now? Oh, we got to go find this fella, right? Yeah. So we head towards that, that unless somebody's got another idea. We're off to avenge, perhaps a little scouting first, mm -hmm. maybe. Find real Check quick, how do you spell Ollie? L -L -O -L -L. O-L-L? O-L-L-I-E. Oh. Yeah. Shit. That's okay, you just give think? it some flair. Yeah. Does do you you short rest bring, bring back sorcery points? All sorts of yeah. Because I just took a short rest and it brought back one of my sorcery points, which Seems odd. I don't know if I hit a button by accident or if it, it, it it's a thing. I'll double check. Because it doesn't. I don't see anything numbers. about it. But is Birdie also an IE? That's uh, as in bye bye. Oh. Like is it, is it B I R D Y or I? Birdie like a bird. Yeah, but how do you spell it? Oh, B I R D I E. Fuck. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> There's no X in there. Where would the X? Come? It's a Y. You were, oh. you were getting them on a long rest. That's what I thought. Yeah. That's weird. Hacked planet. <laughs> I must have hit a button. It Maybe. must have been user yeah. error and not D and D Beyond, Obviously. where you can sign up for free using the link D and D Beyond dot link slash critters. Wow. Fantastic. Wow. Now I'm wow. you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to hit another short rest and see if it clears another Go one. Go for it. Yeah. Drum roll. Oh. Nope, it was a user error. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there you have it, folks. <laughs> Alrighty. So where are we off to now? We're going to follow the blip. Follow, follow the ball. ball. Okay. Finishing your brief excursion to the wondrous singular tavern known as the Taste of Taldore, you step back out into now the hot midday air of the Hellcatch Valley. The nearly cloudless, bright blue sky above and the glaring heat of the sun now upon you, you almost immediately kick into a sweat beneath your layers yeah. of clothing and armor. And the day drinking. Uh, oh. And the day drinking. So much sugar. <clears throat> yeah. Chutney. Yes? Those two assholes from the bar are going to follow us. I would love for you to keep an eye on that. Oh, baby. Wait, I'm carrying this music box. I'm trying to work while I walk. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you know, I, I No, no, I like the challenge, not a problem. All right. <laughs> okay, roll perception check for me with disadvantage. Come on, <laughs> where are the originals? And, <laughs> oh, shit, the disadvantage, fuck me, 11. <laughs> okay, keeping an eye, feeling pretty solid. All right, so, and following this a little bit further, you wind through the streets and the loud sounds of arguments and heavy banter echoing past various offshoot roads and alleys. You walk past large kind of field and, and, and plains-based horses that you recognize some of the breeds as being uh, imports not too far away from, uh, from uh, oh. the region of the Stratostorm um, in the Italian Highlands. Um, came from Esther mm -hmm. uh, Pushing beyond that, you do follow the blip on this. It begins to shift to the uh -oh. left. Oh, 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 we got movement. Is it oh. moving? Is it Is moving? It moving? I back up. It returns to where it was. Oh, all right. What? Switch directions. <gasps> I, I think we're getting very close to What's the left. To Looking in the direction of where that blip is coming from, you see what is called the Bank of Renewal. Bank of Renewal? Is what it's labeled as. And there are a number of kind of uh, thick tapestries that are affixed between heavy poles that have Bank of Renewal market, open market, 
enter and purchase all sorts of various presentational banners. And looking past them, there is kind of a, a heavy wooded fence line that marks the inside of what is a bustling marketplace. Oh. You can see all manner of small uh, tents and uh, sitting arrangements, benches. There are carts that are set up with their own kind of presentational front um, with heavy cloths and signage placed in the front, uh, decorative banners and streamers that kind of arc from place to place. This is, in some ways, it reminds you of the caravanserai that you spent the first night on, but you know, larger than the one particular location. It is a, a large central courtyard, but maybe four, say, four, four dozen or so shops of different sizes that are kind of just sitting out in the open. There are all manner of individuals that live here in the city and are traveling through, traders and such, that are also bringing their carts along and are just kind of perusing the wares around you. We are just hitting all of the best hits of this town. Mm-hmm. Holy shit. Fantastic. We're still rocking. This place is great. Sorry, rocking our cloaks, right? Are we all? Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been a hot minute. Yeah, it's been a hot minute. Wait, but a very wait, hot minute. What, is, what are we doing when we find him? What are we doing? Oh, yeah. Good question. Because we have to capture him. We can't oh, kill him. Oh, let's capture him? Um, I, I have, and I'm going to pull out the uh, the little trap orb that we got from the Green Seekers. Mm. Oh, right. I have one of those left. That's right. That we never Good. used. Brilliant. Oh, I forgot about that. Should we kill him and then put him in the orb? <laughs> we can get him. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. He might recognize many of us, unless someone can either disguise ourselves or if we had someone who he wouldn't recognize. Do I recognize any of the Gajakandas in here? Any? Uh-huh. Oh, there are all manner of Gajakandas around. Okay. Um, um, you any, see- anybody might <gasps> give a fuck if we start a little bit oh. of a ruckus. Uh, make a perception check. Right. Oh, I can, I can do that, yeah. Uh, uh, you might be in here. That's a, right uh, mm. yep, that's a uh, natural 20. Oh, oh shit! Dang. Dang. Uh, what? Perception of 21. Great. Uh, you can see that there are, at first glance, about six Gajakandas that are armored and just kind of keeping an eye on the surrounding space. Uh, you also know, having lived here previously, that most of the unspoken laws that guide the city, the interior of the city, um, speak out against like crawler gang uh, infighting meaning uh, faction versus faction, any sort of violence from one crawler gang to another crawler gang, that is entirely uh, considered uncouth and is punishable by the Gajakandas or the union of crawler gangs within the city limits. Um, most other things are free cool. for all. All right. Uh, so a little bit of scuffle, as long as it isn't identifiable as that particular kind of violence, probably should, with enough reason and conversation without having an issue. Well, if he's here close, but we don't know how close or where. Yes, you, you see how sensitive it is when I move the ball. It okay, you know he's he's somewhere. Once you're in like thirty feet, it just loses the sensitivity, right. and it so just says you're nearby at that yes. point. Plus, this place is packed. Yes. So we don't want to do it how running do on everything. I'm are afraid. there, Matt? Are there buildings that are more than one story high here? Uh, no, okay. there, and there are no like focused buildings. It doesn't be like a handful of small storage facilities. Most everything out here is uh, mobile uh, and can be set up and taken down quickly. It's like a swap. Yeah, it's like a, it's like a large flea market. Okay. Wait, who's got the hole? Mm-hmm. Oh, I do. Yeah, I'm gonna put the music box in there. Want to have both hands available? Yes, of course. That's a whole conversation. We have a hole. That's a whole conversation. How's your hole? Yeah. Thank you. Family. <laughs> That'd be right. We're going to put the music box in there. Fern has a hole. Wait, but how? Well, it's. <laughs> this opens up to like a 10 foot deep, 10 foot in diameter hole. That's girthy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's girthy. You can, you can put stuff in it. Yeah, Let's yeah you can. Cool. And then you can fold it back up. It's this. Oh. Well, don't fucking put it away. I gotta put the box in there. Wait, so, but how do I do? How do we do it? Yeah, we don't want to do it. We can't do it here. We gotta look, look, wait. Give it to Coward. me. I can hold it. No, you can't look at it before I, I, oh, I finish. Oh, okay, okay. I won't so, look. Uh, I won't look at it. 
it's like a rolled up beach towel, right? Isn't it a fabric? That yeah. Isn't? It's meant to, you have to play it, 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 it on the ground. Oh, yeah, you gotta go. Foo, foo. I've watched Looney Tunes. Eh? It's fine, it's fine, it's <laughs> fine. I've worked, I've worked with Noah. Do I put it in my whole body star. until he's eating? Oh, that's how. Oh my god. You can just store it in here for an hour or something. <laughs> Trust me. Just like move the tongue so out of the way. <laughs> oh, no, it's fine. It's fine. I hate it. I so got one much. hand. I'm good. No, 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 no. We got it. We need your. We need to have your hands. Okay, let's, Let me, some, let's make a human we'll shield real quick to oh, hide it. Is there a head everybody everybody Oh god. I'm gonna make a circle. Yeah, yeah we're gonna huddle like so someone's getting changed. Come on. Oh. <laughs> While we're huddling, I'm just looking around like, oh god. Let's make a spectacle us. of ourselves. Okay, so you all huddle up in a circle and you place <laughs> the ma so material strange. out on the ground. I'm it so unfolds and there is a darkened Close expanse Close now your between eyes. you. I put it in, drop, oh, shit. You're tingling like some spring. Can I put some stuff in there? Do we really have this stuff in there? Okay, okay, here, wait. <laughs> okay. Oh yeah, put it in there. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, it's gonna break. They're plates. It rattles. <laughs> 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 Fold it right back up. Yeah, how many people are watching us do that? Yeah. Uh, glancing around, like two people, okay. they're just like, and they go about their business. Okay. It's not a very crowded bazaar at the moment. But, uh, That's right, nothing worth dying over. <laughs> <laughs> Never seen a pocket dimension before. <laughs> Let's just scan around, see what we see. Should we all um, split, split up? up? I think it's small enough that if we split up, if someone just makes some noise, we should be able to hear everybody, right? Show Dusk what Trushy looks like. That's something you can do. Oh, yeah. Uh, I can't really create images. I can. Oh, I can. He can. Oh. Yeah. Little face arm. Uh -huh. So you can see kind of the uh, uh, the long dark hair, the uh, the <laughs> kind of deeply tanned skin, well kept kind of facial hair, and then kind of the dwarven esque uh, features to him. He he's could got, be in disguise though. On his cheek. <laughs> he might look a little different. Okay. Uh, yes. So what's the plan? That's a. Uh, can you do your Can you do your brain groups? thing too? Scan the crowd, maybe hear some chatter. I don't know how it works. I, I can. I can try, mm -hmm. but the more people that are around, the harder it is to. Oh, that's fair. Distinguish. Well, do a visual scan first. Uh, can you be selective with it? Can you just stay in <clears throat> our heads? Um. If I open it up, I open it up to everybody. I, you know, I can talk to you, but mm -hmm. if I'm trying to read a thought, if I'm really opening it up, it. Everything. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's just start making our way. Mm -hmm. All righty. <laughs> so, are you keeping like a loose cohesion? Or are you spreading I'm out a bit? I'm split into yeah. like three groups that can all message each other. Yeah, that's smart. Okay. You can message. I can message. I can send at least a vibe. And I can message. All right, so, so your captain, we have to... your team captains. All right, okay. Um. Oh goodness, <laughs> should we bulge up parchment shears to see who picks first? Yeah. I'll go with you. There, that is done. Okay, <laughs> okay. Sure. Yeah. Do you want to be on my team? Yes, I do. I'll stick with you too. All right. And Chetney, you're with Fresh Cutters. <laughs> <laughs> It's an honor to have you aboard. I would say the same. Yeah, yeah. I'm very I'm excited to have I think our chances of success are the greatest. I agree. <laughs> Let's you, roll you out. dicks. <laughs> Respect the autonomatomanon. The, al the alpha. <laughs> See you when you sleep. <laughs> okay, so who's humming this, the orb and leading and guiding the initial? Well, I, I guess I still have the orb, unless I want to hand it to us. Any, does anyone want to take this? No, no. I mean, I'm is it is it very still far away or where? No, it's like, like doesn't it as, as you're walking we'll through the bazaar, you can see like the the marker is shifting pretty quickly, which means you're getting fairly close. Okay, well we'll, we'll so continue we kind of distantly following. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll kind of will ping the groups. 
heads as we go on. You like, got it. Mm, little, little so north, like you north. up the center line, mm -hmm. following the GPS, and us yes. spread out yes. in the right. distance. Okay. Mm -hmm. Tense as you all kind of splinter off into your your groups, uh, independently but still following the positioning. You, Ladna, alongside Dusk, guide the pathway, watching it as it shifts and turns to the left. Be discreet. Yeah. Glancing down, it looks like it begins to move rapidly enough that you notice it's guiding you towards a large tent, um, like a, a multi-interior uh, sus suspended tent of three different points that kind of cascades outward on each side, and there is a large drapery that kind of blocks the interior. Now, as you can see, the River of Renewal is the title to it. The River, the river of Renewal Tent. I don't recognize. I, there's nothing in my memory of this kicking around, is there? Uh, I mean, this whole area is kind of just a. It's, it's a kind of a, a central trade post in the middle of the town. A lot of traders come through here, pawning off things, picking up things, yeah. or just looking for goods as they pass through. So, you know of it. You haven't spent a whole lot of time here because you never really had much to trade, other than a few things you'd, you know, fence or steal. Is there more than one entrance to this tent, or? Uh, it looks like there might be a back entrance, but that's kind of based towards the outer uh, wall, the, the heavy wooden gate that kind of encircles the courtyard. Um, but it's probably accessible if you were to be careful about it. Do we hear anybody in there? Make a reception check. Um, nine. Nine? You don't hear anything coming out from the inside of it. How big is the tent? Uh, from end to end, from what you can see, it's probably about 40 feet across. Um, so it's like a decent size, but it's not It's not like a circus tent of massive proportions. Can I ask everyone, what's, what's, what's like the, the deal with your pocket ball thing? I will tell you in just a moment. Oh. But I'm going to um, uh, uh, lean against the wall, uh, the back wall, mm -hmm. next to the tent, and like, Keep my distance from everybody else, and then I will um, open up my mind and try to hear his thoughts or hear the thoughts of the people from the inside of the tent. Okay. All right. So, um, as you, uh, is, so is anybody around? How many people would be near? Two me? people. If ever you push everyone else beyond your radius, then it would be only two other people. Okay. Then I'm fine. Okay. As you allow your mind to expand, you bring down the barriers that you're so used to reflexively keeping up for your own protection. In doing so, that kind of muttering static that perpetually aggressively simmers at the outskirts of your perception begins to filter in. And through that wave, that kind of rush of energy, both euphoric and energetic, but also loud, the two voices kind of begin to whisper through and find their way to your ears from beyond. Um, there are two individuals, um, male and female. One of them is in the process of counting. Uh, the other one seems to be bored. It's just kind of contemplating the slow morning. Do I recognize them? Neither of them, from what you can tell, no. What's the ball say? Pointing in the direction of this tent. Outlook cloudy. Huh? Outlook cloudy. Outlook cloudy. Actually, give Ask me, again later. Give, give me a second. I'm kind of curious. Can I, can I? Can I grab that? Yeah. I pass it off it. to Ashton. Tracking the person. I'm gonna start just trying to like yes, make my way to the back of the tent to see if it's still pointing at the tent. As it the shifts away. pointing towards the inside of the tent. So it's definitely pretty directly. In there. I'm get me and uh, Chet are gonna walk around the back. Yep. And I'm gonna just throw up a locate object so and try to find put a ring the coal. Man, if it's just on the ring, this person. Yeah. The ring. The ring. You're tracking you. the oh. ring. Shit. Yeah, you that's, get, uh, that's you, what I'm Son of a bitch! You get the sense that indeed this this ring that you've been following is somewhere inside that tent. Okay. Oh, he pawned the ring. Maybe, we don't know. Um, might have. Ooh. We don't know. I'm Maybe bored of this, uh, I'm going in. Yeah, um, should should uh, what, yeah, do we want Dusk back. to go in first and see if she gets eyes on him before we reveal ourselves? Walk in real quick, if you don't see anything, we're coming in. Okay. Um, 
And I walk on in. Okay, so you walk in and you walk in? No, 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 I'm waiting. You walk in, and both of you are going in the back. Yeah, we're going going around at the back. Initiative! But (laughs) before Dusk goes in, I'm going to make eye contact with her. Tell me if anything goes weird. With your mind powers. (laughs) Wow. I mean, that's kind of weird, right? Should I? Oh, okay. Right. Okay. Uh, you both kind of square off to the back portion. You can see there is an, a, a thin slit to the back that kind of leads into the interior. And in the back, you can see there's a few empty boxes and um, things used for the carrying and, and delivering of goods. Um, you walk inside, and you can see there are three uh, oil lanterns kind of hanging from uh, metal hooks that are driven into the three large, uh, kind of mast like pieces of wood that hold up the tent with ropes between them, and along these, uh, beautiful bits of jewelry are hanging, all manner of like gold chains and uh, beautiful bits of decoration. Uh, you can see there are uh, what looks to be fine robes and, and travel garments as well that are hanging on the far back wall. Uh, there are what looks to be cases of gemstones that have been placed upon velvet and put under these like mobile pieces of glass that are locked into place. Um, this looks to be a shop of some kind. And as you walk in, you can see there's uh, a younger woman to the back with uh, brown hair that's been kind of sun bleached to be more of like a light auburn, uh, and herself kind of a uh, beautiful, smooth brown skin who's kind of looking down and counting something before glancing up and noticing your entry. And another man, a little bit older, similar features, uh, but shorter hair that kind of like flares out on the edges, just beyond his ears, who looks over towards you and sets down a a, a satchel, clears his voice. Welcome. I'll maybe be of service to you. Oh, I'm uh, in the market for some jewelry. Of course, of course, happy to help, yes. What do you, what, what are you looking for? So um, can... Something to match uh, maybe a gold chain, so anything like like bangles or rings or... Oh, but of course, I'm happy to present any, to you. Anything new and exciting? Uh, we have a, a number of things have come in recently. Uh, what sort of aesthetic are you trying to match? Oh, I want it to be like, um, if, do you know what glitter is? If there was a, a, a highly concentrated explosive device that could carry all of that in it, and then it went off on me. <laughs> Let me see what we can muster. Thank you. What um, did the ring look like? <laughs> oh, uh, I will describe it in detail. <laughs> a relatively simple platinum band with some lines and scrolling on it. it it's, it's, Detailed enough to remain masculine, mm-hmm. um, but in doing so is also kind of plain. Okay. Understated mm-hmm. would be the, the word. Right. Born. Okay. Um, where did this one come from? Make a perception check to see if you can locate the one that she is in particular oh. describing. Oh. Hmm. Oh no. I have no idea. There's so, how many understated ones are there? <laughs> uh, you watch as he pulls out a, a, a little box and opens it up and begins to like put out handfuls onto this pillow. And there are like probably four dozen rings oh of all different kinds. I mean, there's some gold and some that are encrusted, but there's like six that are all just simple platinum bands of different widths and different designs. Mm. Mm-hmm. 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 <laughs> um, okay. Any any uh, more detail about what you know? Uh, you know what? Um, I'll take them all. How much is it? <laughs> <laughs> well, these are uh, a plethora of silver to platinum and gold. These. Um, <laughs> Maybe ask Tur- him. Turns back and just, looks. Just, just, just the six ones. Just, just. Maybe ask <laughs> well, him uh, uh, if any came in recently. What was the most recent one that came in? Um, you like things that are. Uh, I like. I want something recently. new. <laughs> and which, which is the newest one of them? Do you this suppose? Is a strange request, but uh, we're coming in. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> are you coming in? <laughs> uh, there are, the most recent one was uh, two mornings ago, oh, and pulls out this like beautiful little now? golden and twisted band that ends in this tiny little like pinprick of a ruby. Yeah. Uh, looking close, it has almost like these two small serpent heads that are relatively simple that bite into it. That sounds cool. That uh, sounds awesome. Cool. Yeah. It's the wrong one. Huh? Um. Uh, ask, tell him, oh, tell him you really like, you know, like, dwarven jewelry. Mm-hmm. Do you have anything sort of chonky, like, 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 dwarven made? 
Well, if you're looking for recently, there is also this one. And pulls up this kind of thicker looking, relatively simple platinum band with some lines scrawled into it. Um, looks very similar to the one that you were given and descriptive enough to your mind. Um. Yeah, this one's. When did this one? When did this one come in? Oh, this came in, not, but uh, about a week ago, I think. Is that right, Duma? <gasps> yes, about a week ago. Mm, mm, mm-hmm. Four or five everybody days. Everybody inside. Okay. Grapple cannon uh, is well, loaded. Uh, who do you want? Was, uh, was there somebody? Uh, did a dwarf actually give it to you, <laughs> like a craftsman himself? Or uh, it is himself? policy not to disclose our providers. Well, you understand yeah. professional reasons. Well, I mean, but know, it I... comes from a lineage where it would be um, consistent in quality. Mm. Mm, that seems a little vague to me. I mean, can't you give me any more? Let's just say the individual who sold this um, could afford the finest of jewelry. And parting with this means that the finest of jewelry could once again be yours. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm. Okay. All right. Um, you should tell me about who gave you this ring. Oh. Suggestion. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. That's the stuff. There we go. Come on. Go. Come on, come on. Jedi mind tricks. All right, here we go. You will tell me. What's the DC on this? And this is? Um, Super high level. DC 18. Should be 16. Oh, that's pretty high. Mm-hmm. Okay. As you focus intrinsically, and I will say, okay. There's not a somatic, just a material component, which is easy enough to, I'll say, make a sleight of hand check for me, if you don't mind. Because there are two figures in here, mm-hmm. and the other is watching closely in this Come on. Come on. encounter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Making up for that one. 21. 21, okay, so as you, you know, clasp the component for the spell or put your fingers around your focus um, and whisper forth the requested words to create the suggestion within the figure, you watch him kind of look at you with this coy smile his eyes go slack for a second as his jaw kind of opens ever so faintly, like for a brief moment, his brain just goes blank. And the smile curls up once more. Yes, it is a gentleman we see and hear from time to time, and Armand Treshi. He's uh, quite involved with um, one of the crawler gangs of the city. Probably, uh, if I recall, with this, based on his companions, where he is now. <laughs> smile. Do you get all that? Which gang? Mm. Oh, which gang would that be? No, Paragon's call. Ooh. They are, um. Great. Yeah, oh, but, oh, yeah. They are a bit, um. Oh, right. A bit in a dogged state with the other crawlers. When are all of them not? Am I right? Anything else? Oh, yeah, do you? Does he know where they meet? Where could I find more craftsmanship like this? Like from, I I want to know more. Where do you think I could find this gentleman? The spell itself is beginning to. I'll oh, say. God. Now it's concentration. Mm-hmm. Well, for this, you know, it is still the same request. You okay? I'll 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 let it, I'll let it go. Yeah. Um, himself goes well if it's with the the call. You can, at this point, you're kind of noticing over that the the woman who's also in this place is kind of looking like, with the eyes like, what the, f- you're just spilling the beans, that kind of expression of what are you doing? Mm-hmm. Um, there's a, the Seat of Disdain is the fortress that the call. Seat um, of Disdain. <laughs> seat of Disdain. Seat of Disdain. Seat of Disdain. Seat of yeah, I will say his, his uh, presence here was, was more it's subdued. He was keeping to himself, which was unlike him, which means he's probably on the land. Um, so if he is hiding, that would likely be where. I'll catch oh. Pally, am I right? Mm-hmm. Mm. That's, we are home to those who cannot find home elsewhere. Yeah, yeah we are. Thank you so much, I appreciate it. Hmm. Do you want the ring back? Yeah, get the ring, get the ring. Sure. sure, depending on the price. Mm-hmm. How much is the ring? Well, for this, uh, based on 
the exorbitant uh, amount that I paid for it initially, and the uh, the individual in the craftsmanship which the hails, I would put this at about two hundred and fifty gold pieces. Oh, yeah. do, they, do they ever? Uh, <clears throat> do uh, his clientele ever come back to repurchase the jewelry? Is it like a pawn shop in that way? It's it's not a pawn shop. He's never going to come back for this, right? He very well might. That is really? part of our business. Oh, then maybe leave it here. All right. Well. I would hate to deprive such a somebody of such a treasure, so I'll leave it for now. But I'm, I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about it. I'm gonna browse around and then come back. Thank you. You can see the the uh, open energy seems to withdraw slightly, and the the glance of uh, window shoppers comes over. Of course, yes. Uh, well, you know where to find us. And he like shh, puts all the rings back in the wooden box and. Shunts it beneath the countertop and immediately kind of goes back to his counting, but keeping an eye on you as you go. Mm-hmm. His compatriot is still going like. <laughs> I didn't take anything. It's, 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 I promise. I just very indecisive. Come again. <laughs> so now. So now we go to the Paragon's call. Ready? Two, one. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Where is he? Where is he? What? You see, like the 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 woman is like reached under the counter and has grabbed what looks to be a a, a flint lock, and is like. Oh no no no! Sorry sorry sorry. Um, I don't I don't think our quarry is here. Eh? No. Oh, May- fresh cut grass. I think we got everything we need. We could go. <laughs> uh. Must be a malfunction. Ah, uh, see. Sorry, On master. the fridge again. Sorry for the false alarm. Get out. <laughs> Only because we want to. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You gather up once more. Yeah. Yes, Dusk. Uh, that, that was awesome. Was, that was Thank nice. you. That was so scary. <laughs> Very impressive. You did great. Yeah. You did great. You're so moist. <laughs> yeah. He's also incredibly hot yeah. in this He's tent. Very, very, it's very hot. Yeah. So, uh, should we seek out. Uh, Seat of disdain? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It seems like we've got, got well, a little bit of time since Mom and Pop are going to yeah. be. Wasn't the here? word fortress floated? Fortress? Yeah, didn't didn't I hear the word fortress? You did. Yeah. Oh great, it's a fortress. Hey, didn't uh, Paragon's Call have some interest in you? I mean, technically, yeah. Although that was a that was a while ago and very far away. I mean, oh well, yeah, they're, they're they're the like, guy that beat the shit out of yeah, you. Like, you ever want to go? I mean, it was it was a pretty even fight. It was it was down to the wire. <laughs> you beat the shit out of you. It was down rest. to the fucking wire. <laughs> All right, down to the wire. Yeah. Yeah. And he said, if you ever wanted to like earn some real money, right? Yeah. You look him up. Yeah. Oh so shit. Maybe you're looking him Infiltration up. Infiltration time. <gasps> what was his name? I'm looking, I'm looking at him. At him. Up Sergeant Slaughter, I think it was. <laughs> General Ratanish. Ratanish. He got a promotion. <laughs> I like this plan. Uh, oh boy. The trouble is going in on your own. It's tricky, and they're also going to know who I am. Well, yeah. Which means I guess you can go in by yourself. Maybe you scout the place, and then. Oof. And they don't know also, me. I could go with you. That's true. Ooh, also, yeah. he doesn't know that we're looking for him. He doesn't know that anyone's looking for him, does he? Yeah. sold the ring, though. Yeah, so like maybe he needed some, some moolah. Maybe. As an alternate you... option, maybe, probably, we could also just stake out the place and wait till he takes a walk. He was very protective over that ring. It was clearly of utmost value to him. The fact that he would sell it, I mean, he's, he's the lord of a house, so I don't know, I, I just... I think we should go in cautiously. Sure, sure. I would agree. We'll take a look, and if it seems like going, sending me in is the best plan, I will go in and take a look. But anytime you start dealing with the crawlers or any of the gangs, things get complicated. It's the only politics in this fucking town. And anything else kind of goes, but this is the one place that you have to be very, very fucking careful. And that's something that you're good at? I know the town. I grew up here. Okay. 
Do we know where the seat of disdain is? You would know, actually. It's in the West Dregs. West Dregs. Do we think there's a chance? West Dregs. That he caught Wise? I would think he would want to get it further away from him. If he I did. I think he's probably just desperate for cash. Yeah. You do he recall that Estros mentioned that he left behind most all, his, ever, all of his stuff because he oh, left quickly and just took what was necessary. I wonder, would, I, I, would I remember that that's a safe house too? That that's that's kind of one of the things that, that it's possible. You, you you didn't have a lot of dealings with the call. No, really. Uh, in not. fact, you avoided most of the crawler gangs for the time you were here. You just know where it is and you know that that is the base of operations for the Paragon's call. And it's it's when you say fortress. It's not like a castle. No. It's a it's a well defended three story stone building with. Defensible battlements, uh, in case there's any recurring, as history has proven, scuffles with other crawler gangs and other individuals that are seeking entry. Gotcha, gotcha. But let's go. As you muster the courage to pursue this new thread, and where Treshi has seemingly clamped down for his own personal protection, as well as the other unraveling threads of. Interesting serendipity and curiosity. We're gonna go ahead and take a break. Um, we'll be back here in just a few minutes to pick up from there and see where the hell this group of assholes is off to. Um, so we'll see you shortly. Laura Bailey here to guide you through what's new in the Critical Role Shop. It's too powerful! The cuteness, it's overpowering. It's so cute, I can't handle it. I mean, the Traveler always says impulse purchases are a good decision. Style should never be a dumb stat, darling. If you want, you could head over to the Critical Role shop right now. I know Sam and uh, Talison got like a beefy dock for. Basarus. Oh, we yeah. love like, a beefy dog. Love those <laughs> beefy love, dogs. Love a beefy dog. <laughs> Girl talk. Do you love a beefy <laughs> dog? I'm so. Fuck your show. <laughs> Fuck your show. <laughs> show. Fuck your mind. Time to go. Oh, okay. the running man. My oh, only weakness. Cool. Where is Omar? He's been asleep on my feet for the last oh, like ten no. minutes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I didn't really fart. It was the chair. Oh. Stop it. No. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> stop it. I didn't fart. Uh, the, the, amount of, the amount of times that I will like be thinking of an NPC in, in the upcoming part of the campaign and start like in my head imagining how their physicality would be and as such how they might they might sound and I'll start like like improvising dialogue and finding their voice and then suddenly Marisha's like, you talking to yourself? <laughs> I'll just be off in the hallway and be like, like, of course, follow me down this path. Yeah, no, I'm, I, I was just gonna, I was gonna put my shoes on and I had an idea. You heard nothing! <laughs> If you're a dungeon master yeah. and you need some voices time, just don't do it in the bathroom because other people in the apartment sometimes need to get in there. <laughs> and if you're in there doing voices time, then they might remind you that that's not the right place for that. And they might be um, brusque uh, about oh boy. how the bathroom's not the right place for that, even though it's very quiet and kind of meditative it's in there. And too. it's good it's a great acoustic. Yo, mine's bathtub. I get in the bathtub and I get weird in there. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> this is the real shit! Yeah. We're finally yeah. saying it! All right. It's a lush bath bomb and me just being deeply weird for an hour and a half in the tub. I like, love it. Ooh, okay. I love it.
a thousand pounds, everyone. <laughs> She's the bone collector. This might be good for a stew or something. You never know. Do you keep your bones in your water bucket? <sighs> no, I keep them in my ink hole. What? She keeps them in her ink hole! Well, thank you, Joanne. <laughs> So I'll show you, and then I lean over to show my ink hole to, Ooh, to, to, show to you Nugget. Our ink hole. No. Nugget, you have never to seen an ink hole. To you are dog. too young to have seen an ink hole before. What do you think? Oh, it looks nice. Thank, I know it is. Thank you. Never had any complaints. <laughs> doing this right or oh sorry um am i doing this right you can also gift subscriptions to fellow critters so what are you waiting for start spreading that sweet serenity with a twitch subscription to critical role it's like a warm blanket oh, oh it's my proctologist just give me a second okay hello hello, hello? Oh, hey, hey, Doc, yeah, what, what's up? What do you mean, more teeth? I thought you got rid of them all. Well, no, you don't tell me to relax. I'm the one with teeth up my... Subscribe.
And welcome back. Okay, brilliant. So, <laughs> Bell's Hells, after being in search of the whereabouts of Amon Treshi, the reason for you coming to Basaris under the employ of Lord Eshteros once more, you sought out the particular ring that held the enchantment of which you were seeking him, and found the ring had seemingly been pawned in one of the local flea markets within the city. However, through some quick work and magical influence by your new companion, Dusk, you found that the whereabouts of this Armand Treshi may reside within a small fortress that is held by the Paragon's Call, known as the Seat of Disdain. You've gathered your things, gathered your thoughts, and with the guidance of Ashton and his history and knowledge of the city is layout, you are heading in the direction, I believe, of this particular fortress. Um, is there any preparations or any conversations you wish to <laughs> work out or plot for in advance on your way? Nope, just gonna go. <clears throat> Perfect. Oh, great. Walk towards it. Um, should we? Uh, how do uh, the the crawler gangs work? Do you, like do they have certain territories within the city, or is it just? I mean, in theory, uh, in practice, it's more like there's. Kind of a hierarchy, less than territories, if that makes sense. Uh, and I don't really know who's where these days, but they're, I mean, like the All Minds Burn are just kind of running around. Uh, the Gaja Kandas are kind of in charge. Uh, Fists of the Ruin are just whatever the fuck they want to be at any moment. Uh, and then the Paragon's Call, I don't know, the last time I was here, they were kind of large and intense. I don't know how they're doing these days. Yeah, and, and uh, it caught your attention to see the Paragon's Call being presented in Drusar as a legitimate defense force, yeah. knowing where they came from, and that caught you a little, a little odd. Yeah, they were not exactly what you would consider to be a legitimate group of people last time I was here. That was. Uh, I'm surprised to see them leave the city, let alone have a reputation. That's weird. How long ago were you here? Oh man, it was it was double digits at least. It was a very, very long time ago. Uh, it's been a very long time. Uh, but this is uh, if they're trying to be legitimate, maybe they'll actually open mm -hmm. the door and talk to people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. <laughs> sure. Continuing onward. Uh, you watch as you push further towards the direction of this this seat of disdain, whatever that may conjure in your mind upon approach. Which uh, thing? Seat. This thing. Of this thing. Disdain. Seat of disdain. disdain. That was pretty stupid, but I respect it. <laughs> um, passing by the crowd as you go, kind of weaving between the clusters of individuals that call this place home, uh, keeping your hands close to your pockets and coin purses as you do. Um, you catch an interesting visual, uh, fresh cut grass, of one individual who is currently moving forward on a wagon with all sorts of wares in the back of it uh, stacked up, and as opposed to a horse or an oxen or some of the beast of burden, there is an odd, almost beetle-like automaton with eight legs um, almost more arachnid-like, that has three different unmatching pairs of legs that currently kind of skitter and pull forward, leaving an odd scraping formation in the dust and sand behind it, pulling forward. Um, in a lot of your journeys, you don't see a lot of just out in the open automatons, let alone those that are uh, quirky in their presentation. Um, but it does give you a sense of home, if anything, was being surrounded by other such oddities as you find yourself to be. Um, but I'll, I'll say hi and just see if they they have communication skills. Okay. Well, hello there. Hi. Hi. Am I related to you? Hello. The person at the back of the cart kind of <laughs> smiley day. Oh, okay. It's so curious how they're so different. I agree. Um, do 
that you not have souls? No, neither do I. <gasps> I this is a question of debate. I don't know if I agree with that. Well, I'm like them. And well, you're like no, you. No, you're not like you're them. Not. Well, I'm just a bit more sophisticated in my design. You have thoughts. I hear them. I have a complicated set of inputs and outputs mm. that have been designed into me. I think we can agree that you're a rarity. FCG, <laughs> have you ever thought maybe you're like me? You were once alive. Ooh. And now you're in a puppet. Whoa. Whoa. If I had a mind, it would be blown right now. <laughs> 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 what that could be true. What if I'm a a shell, a husk of an old person or something. Oh, but now you're you. That's pretty cool. Exactly. I feel like it probably doesn't matter so much about what the shell is like, so much as what's uh, in wherever, um, I don't know, yeah. What? Yeah, what? You have a, a, a heart? Mm-hmm. Nope. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Aren't you curious about you? You're you're all forgetful about yourself as well. No, I've got you guys, and I've got uh, my stuff, and I have a couple <laughs> of quests on the docket. Two, two more than one. Yeah, well, like two. the one with us, and yeah. then the one for yourself. Mm-hmm. There were three of you. So I feel like it doesn't really matter as much all the time. I I, I, I kind of let my past inform who I am, but I don't kind of get too hung up about it. It's very mature and healthy of you. I must <laughs> admit that I'm, I don't share that, that confidence. I would really like to know what I am and where I came from. What do you want to be? I'd like to be like you all. I'd like to be able to smell and, and taste and dream and fart. Or that last one, that last one's not necessary, no, but it's it's, it seems like you all really like it's, to do it's it. Funny. <laughs> it's it's funny. I mean, if you'd mentioned this before we left, we could have had Milo work that in. I don't feel like that's. Mm. I don't feel like you need a soul for do that. Anything can do that. Just the action of it, but the, <laughs> the internal satisfaction, the the cosmic satisfaction that you all seem to feel. Mm. <laughs> it's true. Anyone who says they don't like it is lying. That's true. Mm-hmm. It's a really pleasurable experience. It is. Yeah. Bodily functions rule. Yeah. Or I'll rub or, it in now. Well, I mean, I'm just joking. I bet like, <laughs> oh, well. it's all about like what's in your mind, because like yeah, I, sure. you know, when something yeah. like really good happens <laughs> in my body, it's like I'm, it's, it's, it's it happens up here, Nothing you know. Yeah. So I feel like you could probably work something out with that. Is is this something? Is this something? Maybe, maybe. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'll practice. I'll practice. You all hear the heavy impacts getting louder and louder. At first, they seemed somewhat distant, but you feel the vibrations, gentle at first, begin to grow with each heavy impact. And you watch as in this one bit of open clearing that seems to lead and spread outward into a a wider thoroughfare that eventually leads to the exterior of the, uh, the large red walls, the Carmine Curtain, that signifies the exterior of the inner city of Basaris, you watch as a massive, kind of cobbled metallic beam of gears and pulleys and odd metal bands and rods that work and scrape against each other, giving uh, heavy grinding noises and the sound of sparks and, and metal pushing against metal. As coming around the corner, these massive, curled, almost spider-like limbs, maybe three to four feet in width, begin to impact. As it pushes past, you can see what looks to be a crawler gang, fully armored, keeping a perimeter. And as it moves beyond, you can see platforms, two of them, that are affixed atop of these legs. There's no like central body or any sort of, of humanoid form to it. This looks to be a moving platform with what 
at a quick glance, is maybe five, six legs of different sizes and makes that move it slowly across the ground. You can see on the lower platform, there are about five other crawlers that are hanging on to cables and ropes, kind of staring down and glowering over the rest of the crowd in the streets as they give a wide berth. On the upper platform above that, you can see almost like a crow's nest scenario with one other crawler up there with a long spyglass and what looks to be some sort of a mounted uh, long rifle, reminiscent of some of the ones that you've seen designed in Whitestone. Um, though this one is more of a unique Marquesian spin on its particular make. But as they move past, uh, it begins to take up speed and move with a rapidity that you weren't expecting. Not anywhere near as fast as the uh, the skirmish crawlers that you've seen within, but definitely this could move a large group of, of individuals quite a distance rather rapidly. Can I can Orm uh, sort of clock or zero in on what is powering this thing that's so big? Make a perception or arcana, your choice. Uh, I will do perception always. Uh, that is a uh, 18. 18. Glancing amongst this particular structure, this, this massive automaton-like entity, there are three different places within its body. One that's kind of affixed underneath the main platform on the bottom, one that kind of rests on top and to the right, and then one that sits kind of catty corner to the underneath base of that uh, kind of uh, crow's nest portion of its design. There's these metallic cages that hold within them these faint kind of bluish purple gems almost that just kind of crackle it and glow with arcane energy. And occasionally you see them spark, and they kind of flare, and bits of arcane sparks shower out and kind of glitter to the ground and scatter a bit. Um, and as they do, you can see waves of that same arcane energy kind of flood through these little marketed, almost rune-like grooves that run through the entire network of metal plates and odd bits of scrap that are affixed to it. Most of the coloration of it ranges from like gunmetal to uh, shiny bits of silver that are maintained well in some areas, a majority of it in that brownish red rust that has just kind of let the elements take over. Still functional, not being eaten away, but definitely definitely living within the aesthetic of Basarus and the surrounding Hellcatch Valley. Um, the funds aren't there to keep it looking pretty. Functional is really the main keyword. Which is interesting, because uh, as it gets quite a distance away, you watch one of the legs suddenly shower out sparks as it buckles, and the whole platform kind of lists to one side, and a bunch of them kind of almost slide off and catch themselves. As one person leaps off onto the ground and goes, God fucking damn it, and like kicks the edge of it, and shouts up to somebody else who throws down some sort of a, an odd leather bag and they catch and throw over his shoulder and start pulling through and you see them now trying to figure out how to fix it and just cursing themselves as you see more arcane sparks fly out and the sense of awe that and wonder that you had kept for this has diminished slightly as the crowd <laughs> begins to go about the rest of their business. The the silence that seemed to have captured the center of this 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 open area of the city now giving way to the the general energy you're used to. Was there a was there a, a group insignia anywhere on that? Uh, make a perception check. Uh, I hate my perception because that's just nine. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. You didn't make out enough at, at the time it was going by. You didn't get a quick glance. You could rush up if you want to to get a closer look. It's not like it's a hidden detail, but it's far enough away where you'd have to kind of make yourself known to do so. Uh, no. There's two options where that would be stupid. Mm. Call? I don't know, it didn't give the vibe. My immediate guess is all mines burn, but I'd have to go over and check, and then there would just be this person going over there to check, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and uh, uh, I'm not really in the mood to have a conversation with those people. All right. However, not too far beyond where this display found you in the middle of the city, you do see the midday burning kind of plumes of black smoke that burn from the rooftop burn piles that connotate the top of the three-tiered stone fortress that is the Seat of Disdain. Uh, glancing beyond, you can see there is a small wall that itself kind of mimics the carmine curtain around the city, only instead of a deep red kind of uh, sanguine coloration, this has a painted sky blue that is streaked 
from the occasional monsoon rains and left to kind of give this, this weathered, melting sense to the exterior coloration. Beyond these kind of crenellated walls that end in these kind of large, jagged bits of broken metal, as opposed to fine metallic, uh, you know, wrought iron pokers at the top, it is just jagged bits of scrap that is kind of aligned and set within the stone up top. That post, upon a close look, you can't tell which parts are rust and which parts are caked blood. Um, and even just at a sideways glance, whatever can't cut will definitely hurt if something were thrust or to fall upon it. Beyond that, mm -hmm. uh, the front gate that's nearest facing you to it um, is a, a tall wooden door that's been reinforced with kind of iron fittings that are bolted inward and help reinforce it. So you can see the wood itself is rotting a little bit, but it's thick enough that it would take many, many years before it actually became a nuisance, and the iron is just there to kind of preserve it for as long as it can. Um, Beyond the second and third tier of this fortress, which you can see is pretty standard, uh, kind of rectangular design, nothing fancy, nothing visually distinguishing beyond it just being a functional fortress. You can see there are a number of like uh, ammunition slits for arrows, crossbows, or ballista. You can see there are a few watching or, or lookout platforms that emerge, especially on the very top. There are four tall, kind of curved spires that raise upward, made out of the same kind of uh, cobbled metal kind of iron and steel combination to create these kind of twisting horns almost that emerge from the top. And there, there's the two burn piles, just the ever kind of drifting black spires that continue upward into the sky before dissipating. Um, if you didn't say already, is this structure, is this building uh, surrounded on all sides by more of the city or is it up against one of the outer walls? I can't remember. Location. Fair enough. Uh, it is not right up against the Carmine Wall. It, it's maybe a ten-minute walk from the exterior, but it is surrounded by city. But there is definitely a, its own large interior wall that also divides it from the city right. around it. But you could walk all the way around this thing, best we can tell from where we are now. You could. And what surrounds the place? Like what? Like what? what are there businesses, residences, other? Sketchy uh, looking buildings. I mean, a number of, of, of sketchy looking buildings, uh, but a number of just old looking uh, residential neighborhood sections as well. You can see uh, the older kind of uh, natural stone structures, the, the kind of mud masoned uh, square buildings that are also themselves built upon older bits of ruin and rock. There are some that are just large cloth tents that are utilized as a mobile abode for those who may have been staked down for quite some time and are not being challenged on the portion of the city that they've carved out for themselves. Um, but the area surrounding it looks mostly residential, although you know it's hard to tell at a glance if anything carries other things internally. Okay, and we're within view of what looks to be the main entrance of it. Uh, you can see it about three blocks down the road from where you are. Can we see, are there any guards walking along the top? Uh, from where we are? I'd say, go make a perception check for me. Guidance! Oh! Looking to. Well, that's very kind of you. <clears throat> Case in the joint. Oh! 20 for me. 20 for me as well. Yeah. Nice. Indeed, you see there are three figures up there that are just kind of standing stationary. One of them occasionally kind of walks past and checks. And with a 20 on each of you, you also see that between each of these large curved spires that probably climb upwards 15 or feet from where the top of the building ends, um, you can see large mounted weaponry. You're uncertain at this distance what kind of weaponry, but uh, familiar with ballista and other sort of uh, stationary defensive munitions with your sky ships and other experiences in the world abound, uh, it looks like they have uh, defense ready weaponry. So. Chetney picks the lock and we just go straight through the front door. Straight through. Nobody <laughs> even knows there's nobody watching. No reason to overthink this. They'll just reach out and touch you otherwise. So should we just knock and go in? <laughs> do all of us want to go in or do, do we send? I don't think any of us want to go in, right? Should we just wait and see who comes and goes? Yeah, Let's we just scout find, it for a bit. Yeah? Find a place to um, watch from. Give it a day. Let's walk around, see if there's somewhere to sit. Some, some of us could go buzz around and. Mm -hmm. That's oh, true. That's right. I can turn.
darn it. Well, I can't fly, though. Oh, well, he could be a rat or something. Imogen can fly. Imogen oh, that's right. I might be a little bit noticeable, though, you know, because well, I'm... work on that. I bet you could be something with sticky feet, though, for him. Uh, ooh, you could know dress what, you up. I am bald now. Aerodynamic? Well, no. I'm going to pick up some, like, mud from the ground. Ooh. And just, like... Put it across my eyes like yes. Furiosa style. Oh. <laughs> yes. It, interestingly enough, uh, in in this proximity to the the burn piles and some of the other industrial elements here, when you reach down in the dirt and you pull it up in your hand, there's a layer of like dark soot also that mixes with it. And so as you smear it across, it gives like a darker, almost like a slate gray texture and color to it. Do I look, oh God, oh my God. Do I look tougher? Do I look tougher? So tough, like the, you know, grassy road over top. It's a look, yes. Can you can you fly dusk or do any tricks? Can you teleport? I mean, no you invisible. Just Change go your appearance. In there, right? I mean, mm. I don't know me. You could, but maybe you won't be able to get out. Oh. You'd mm. have to go in with specific business. I feel like. What's our excuse? Are we, are we missionaries traveling to spread the word of, of the Wild Mother? Mm. Are we? City surveyors looking for a, a location of a new elementary school? They literally have anti siege weaponry attached to the roof of that compound. So it can support a good foundation for an elementary school. But it is clear that Paragon's Call is also seeking to gain status, right? In mm -hmm. other cities. So Ooh. maybe someone could be a, a diplomat. Dignitary or coming to offer. Or request security services. Exactly. Mm. Oh, that's a good idea. Orm could pass that off, maybe. I don't know that I want to walk into a heavily armed military uh, fortress, a compound. Have you tried it before? Well. No. It doesn't mean I should start now. Uh, Treshi left a few days ago to sell a ring. You guys don't want to just like hole up in a building across the street? I mean, yeah, we can do that for sure. No, I'm not really. I mean, I could <laughs> certainly, you know, go in as a little rat or a spider just to investigate. That okay, makes sense. And the rest yeah. of us just kind of sit tight and, you know, do a stakeout. Yeah, I do kind of want to walk the perimeter, though, and, and see, you know, if there's other doorways that he might be coming in and out of. Mm. I mean, there might be underground tunnels for all we know. Sure. See if people come in and out of the building, how often, mm -hmm. what it looks like at night. Yeah. <clears throat> Is there some sort of a, a neighboring building or inn where we can. There, there are a number of neighboring buildings um, in the immediate there vicinity. Are four stories, perhaps? <laughs> Actually, no. Uh, no oh, there, there, there are no build, <gasps> there are no structures that are like residential or. Open to the public that are any taller than maybe at most three stories in this region, and would just come a little bit above the wall, if anything. Uh, the towers that you see um, around here may come a little taller, but a lot of them are, are industrial exhausts. Um, specifically, there are a, a number of larger structures around here um, known as the Storm Cisterns, which you know, oh, which are these yes. massive, massive metallic, in some cases almost. Uh, Oddly bent, like they had been, like grabbed and released by some godly entity, and as such, they they raise upward in odd angles, and what should be non-functional or at the very least not unsafe, but have stood for many many years. And at the top of each of these, you can see there's all manner of, of ladders and platforms that kind of rise upward, and there are occasionally people that watch and patrol them because these cisterns uh, collect all the monsoon water and maintain the, the the water that basically keeps the city alive and the people around here and the little bits of greenery and growing in the vicinity viable. Yeah, the Gajakhan to take care of the cisterns, but underneath the cisterns, that's where te the youths go to like do illicit drugs mm. and drink beers. <laughs> huh. I bet we could hang out under the cisterns. You, f you possibly? You've picked this up? I'm just yeah. kind of curious. That yeah. was very fast. I've been here a couple of weeks. Wow. Very wow. 
I just perspective. kind of want to see the cisterns, see the sewers, I'm not going to lie. Actually, a sewer entrance is not a bad idea. Yeah. There's sewers in this city? I mean, shit's got to go somewhere. <laughs> so, it's very true. Okay, we will go. Uh, is there uh, well, a sewer system here? Not in the classic sense. <laughs> oh, man. Say no more. And someone What's was that? dumping out a. Yeah, like a. That's right. Chamber yeah. pot. On there, the certain street. areas of the city do have what are called dumping zones. Mm. Um, and there is one section on the eastern side of the cliffs outside of the skids there where certain individuals make a decent amount of money by picking up refuse and carting it to the outside of the town and then dumping it all off the side of the ravine. Oh, um, and so there's one one large ravine right. side that is just a multicolored rainbow oh. of all sorts of, of runoff, whether it be organic or not, that just kind of lends this, this awful. This this awful pattern of of, of mineral gathering and, and depositing and yeah. How many bodies do you think are down there? <laughs> Several. Imagine they're sludgy enough that you could not count. Well, I'm all sludgy. for for a rat. Dude. That you wanna <laughs> yeah, I, serve I, I a ball. Can. But how will you get out if somebody stomps on you? Well, I'll just I'll figure it out. The princess has got this. Okay, mm -hmm. little risk ain't ever hurt anybody. Have you seen rats? Does the city have rats? This city does have rats, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Tons of rats. It doesn't mean that we don't kill them. Just, well, I know. Do just, well, well, let's just hang out, and then maybe you can scamper in when, pe when people go in and go out. in and out? Yeah. Well, did you want to do a perimeter walk all the way around let's first? Let's just keep doing like, I did want to walk around. Let's thing. do a perimeter walk, mm -hmm. and if it looks like there's a little area that I can skitter through, maybe a little hole underneath the fence or something, right. I can. Okay. You might be more noticeable it. if it's the entire group of us doing an entire perimeter walk, though, just putting that out there. Oh, that's mm -hmm. true, that's true. I'll Just stay behind. I've got work to do anyway. I'll go on your walk. All right. I'll stay with Chet. Okay. Me too. Do you want to? Oh, you'll be a rat. Well, not yet. Well, I was gonna say, what if you took that ring and wore it? That way, we have an orb that would bind you. Well, we we didn't get it, it we, because we didn't it was very expensive. expensive. We didn't buy the ring. No, because he might go back and try to purchase it. We thought maybe we would be able to. If he comes into money, he might. I mean, it is very dear to him. Sure. Never mind. Okay. Do you all if we join you on your walkabout? Walk okay. That ring. Sure. Okay. All right, so the four of you are going on walkabout? Sure. Yeah. All right, well, the rest of you stay behind and kind of keep watch. The other four of you continue to run a perimeter. Um, as you do, you notice that the, the wall itself does, uh, it kind of keeps some, like a pentagon shape around the exterior of the fortress. Um, a little oblong on the southern side of it. And there is a second gate on the opposite side of the wall. So there are two entrances in and out uh, that are viable from a, a, a larger presentary standpoint. And they're both about 15 to 20 feet wide, you guess, at this, at this glance. Um, you do also see uh, the patrols on the top occasionally switch out, um, or at least you see like one person leave and another person come up and take their place, and occasionally someone peeks out beyond one of the watch uh, balconies that protrudes on one of the lower levels and just kind of glances around. One person out there kind of picks their nose for a second, flicks it, then walks back inside. Um, you do also notice kind of up above this portion of the city, there are a number of the, uh, the Hellcatch uh, Vultures, the scavengers, now at this at this high point in the day, sun are kind of circling in spaces. You can see them, kind of keeping watch for any sort of discarded meal opportunities or any of these skittering vermin that make home here in the city. There's probably a, a dozen or so of them that's just immediately above this vicinity, just kind of slowly circling in groups. So two entrances. Yeah, I feel like almost we should split the party. <laughs> and one of us camp out at one and the other. And we put one uh, mind talker on one side, one mind talker on the other side. Mm -hmm. uh, As we're walking, I'm looking for little, little holes or breaks in the fence anywhere that I might be able to 
wiggle through. Make a perception or investigation check. Mm-hmm. Can Come I on. Help her, knowing that Come on. what she's looking for, keeping an eye out at the same time. Yeah, if you'll throw help her out with that. I'll, like, I'll give you advantage. Ooh. Okay, <laughs> that's a good idea. <laughs> It's exactly the same. <laughs> <laughs> okay. A perception? Uh, okay. Um, ten. Oh. It's a pretty solid wall. Um, you can see there's a couple of areas here and there where visible cracks just have been formed over time, whether it be shifting in the ground beneath it, uh, attacks on the wall that have been partially repaired, or just general decay over time. Uh, but they've been patched. Um, you do not see any specific openings that catch your attention that are merely visible. Yeah, not to you know naysay or, or doubt you, but like, I, I don't feel good about this. I don't yeah. feel good about this. I think we all should stick together, and that we should wait until there's a good opportunity or make a good opportunity. But none of this like you know sneaking off one at a time. Yeah, because Fern, I mean, nothing's ever gone wrong by you sneaking off on your own. No. Well, no. <laughs> it's also these birds in the sky. They eat well, rats. They're actual birds. They're not like. <laughs> so maybe you could be like. Um, if she was going to sneak off on her own, which she is not going to do. But maybe you could be like a. If you suggest it, like she's going to do it. Instead. I mean, I, I, like, you know, it's. I could be a cat. I could be. Oh. I could be a capybara. I could be. <laughs> I could be a spider. But like, I feel what like, about like a quokka or something? I could be a quokka for sure. You know, maybe I would charm sweet. them. Maybe yeah, I would, would charm, charm them. them. Mm. You, it's unique. <laughs> you know. <laughs> okay. Mm. Okay. Let's. I like the idea of splitting the party. Maybe we just take a you minute. Look up a quokka. Well, yeah. yeah, how do you spell it? Q U O K K A. You keep role playing. We could. <laughs> we could just watch for a little bit. Yeah. But yeah. I kind of. These things. <laughs> do like getting in there. I fucking love quokkas. Oh, 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 yeah. Oh, oh, oh. oh that yeah. That's got big. That's like the perfect. That's got something. big fern energy. <laughs> but okay, here's a side question. Yes. Not a side question, a bug table. (laughs) If, say, I were to be a creature and were to get attacked by something, (laughs) would I turn back into me? Yep. If you took enough damage to reduce the creature's form's hit points to zero, yes. That's right, okay, okay, okay. Hit point of a kitten. Uh, Hey, where we are, are there any, um, are there any sentries uh, in, in view who are talking? Uh, maybe the exact moment, no, but occasionally they do converse. Like, they're, they're people, so they have to keep themselves engaged as well. Uh, I'm going to uh, start reading the conversations of anyone that I see in view for our entire watch in this place to see if I can pick anything up because of the observant feet. So you can read lips? Yeah. Okay, I have to roll a high perception because they're quite a distance from you. Mm-hmm. To read lips at, you know, 150 feet is no problem. Challenging. <laughs> but it's not impossible. It's the D&D we're talking about. Um, so okay, if you take a moment as you're walking th- around and kind of taking a pass, go ahead and roll a perception check for me. 23. 23. You can see conversation, but it's too far for you to make out any specific words. Occasionally you can see like a large vowel or an expression that seems like they're engaged in some sort of a, a, a joking banter, but it's too far to pick up anything specific. They're using O a lot. <laughs> are, we, are we in any particular, like, real, real hurry? Do we have time to, like, wait for a 24-hour period, I mean, see see this, or do we go with the direct approach and have your friend go on in there? Is there a privacy nearby where I can just go somewhere just for a minute where I'm not seen? There are a number of mm-hmm. nooks and crannies all throughout the city where you can not be seen. Just going to talk about a nook and cranny for a second. Mm-hmm. Never see her again. I don't know if we're necessarily in a hurry. It's just that we <laughs> need to get Armand before he, you know, leaves town, if he hasn't already left town. Okay. Well, so it seems like you guys are split between waiting this out and sneaking in, or going in the front door. Um, yeah, that's 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 bluff. usual for us. <laughs> I run over to them, and I am now a a, a 
Quokka? Quokka. You're gonna be Quokka? <laughs> Real round, real round butt. Just oh real my. round. Oh, <laughs> roundest of butts. be so cute. Oh. oh my god. I forgot everything we were talking about. You're the cutest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. Oh my, god, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Screw it, screw it, screw it. This is all we're doing today. <laughs> you must never change back. Make, make, make the face again, make the quote face again. <laughs> <laughs> Dusk.exe has stopped working. <laughs> I'm gonna run in. I'm gonna run in. I'm gonna run in. Yeah. What's that? Have fun. Yeah. I'm gonna run in. All right. Fun. You go ahead and run on up to the front to the front gates. Thank God. Their gates. Oh. Their gates. You burrow. Oh, do they? Do they burrow? E even, yes. Even stone cold warriors are gonna have. I know, the gates will open, the gates will open. Quokka. They gotta open gonna, at some point. I'm just point. gonna wait. Okay. If found out, just give them the... <laughs> <laughs> the one I am. Sorry. But is there any any bit beneath the, the gate? Uh, there is about an inch and a half below the gate, in places, because some at some points the, the, the gathered dust and kind of sand and dirt kind of rises up to it, and you can see there's heavy patterns where the gates, when they swing open, they push past and kind of leave these kind of gate angels, if you will, in the ground. Um, but to that point, is for very little space. Are we just looking at pictures of Quokka? Before, before I leave the group, I give Dusk a little bit of a lick as an apology of, sorry. Um, okay, okay. Um, I just have to share because um, I searched if Quokka's burrow and I couldn't find that answer, but I did find that I guess Quokas throw their babies as a manage of self defense. If, a, if, a pre, if, a, if they get scared by a predator, they throw their baby Take at my it. my kids! <laughs> and if you don't. No, they don't. No, they don't. What's the source? What's the source? Uh, ABC.net.australia. Oh. Oh, no. That's a kid's. Uh, like, that can't be like right. That's a kid's. sacrifice their babies That's in order to I escape. I have never. <laughs> Identified with a creature more <laughs> in my entire life. Well, it's incredible because you consider that they're Ten throwing their children babies. as a means of self defense with the biggest smile. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Sorry, kid, okay. these, these shape really, really took off yeah. this, this so, episode. As you are sitting there, round, fuzzy butt, large smile at the base of the gate, what do you do, Fern? Um. I'm gonna try to just start. I'm looking around and just try to start scraping <laughs> and burrowing where there's like the, where I see the biggest separation in the gate. Okay, uh, go ahead and roll athletics for me using the. I say I'll say for this creature, just go ahead and roll. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Big natural twenty. No. Uh, Eleven. Eleven. Okay. You begin. You begin to dig. And dig and dig, and about five minutes go by, and you're making some decent progress. But it's going to take you a little longer, but you can do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to commit it. I'm going to work so hard. While Fern is just breaking a furry sweat, though Quoka. they can't sweat. Quoka is breaking a furry sweat. Fern has a Quoka is is, <laughs> is panting uh, due to the inability to sweat um, and digging furiously. What are the rest of you doing? Head. How's it going there, Fern? Well, it's just I'm working real hard to just get under this gate. All right. The rest of you just kind of watching and waiting. Uh, yeah, I tap Imogen's arm. You should maybe alert the rest of the group. Oh, I well, I cannot do that. No. No, because if I do that, I will lose my mental connection with Fern. <laughs> Plus, I can only do it when I establish it with somebody that's within view. Okay. It's been a while. Well, I'll cross my fingers instead. At about the ten minute mark. You can try and push through. Make a strength check for me. She gets it's stuck under that too. damn door the same way she got on the other one. Yes. Ooh. Eight. She gets stuck under the door. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna try to see if there are, if there's anybody inside that I can just smile at. What? <laughs> is she okay? Try to charm. She's a little, little light really kicking. Okay. So the gate is about that thick. 
and you dug underneath the majority of it, and your head just kind of pokes out this way, but your midsection is just kind of stuck. And you guys can see these little legs kind of like kicking in the area beneath. How you doing there? It's just, give, just give me like two more seconds. Okay, because I, I can I can always pretend you're my pet that got away. Yeah. No one's help. paying attention to you yet, though you do see in this entry courtyard. They get a quick glance as you're staring out there. There are all manner of training dummies and weapon racks. Uh, you can see what looks to be uh, three unattended uh, skirmish crawlers, the ones with the sentry, the, the center wheel, wheel in the front and the large, almost like clawed horse-like hooves in the back. Um, you can see there there is a large area where a bonfire at night would largely be lit, but it's just been it's just been set up with uh, flammables in preparation for the night. Um, you can see there are about five guards that are in different places. Just one person's other with like a whetstone, like sharpening weapons. Uh, two others are over there, kind of just snacking on what looks like some sort of dried meat, like a, like a jerky, and conversing. And there are two others that are just patrolling the interior of the courtyard. But how far away is she uh, from you guys? Depends on how far away you've been away watching her dig. I mean, I don't, I don't know. Like depends on are you like right against the wall or are you like watching from across the road? I think we're like across right. the road probably. <laughs> so like twenty five feet. Okay, okay. I am going to use my telekinetic ability and start digging the dirt out from around her Boom. and try to move the dirt. Okay. Starting to look a little more. So close. I got there. One of the guards patrolling, kind of nearby, Fuck. doesn't notice you. Mm, yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> you come out the other side, Bunk. and you're now inside the courtyard. <laughs> I did it. All right. Well, okay. You're cute and noticeable, so you know, move fast. Okay. I'm gonna skitter to where I think the <laughs> entrance of the building is. Okay. Yeah. You can definitively see <laughs> an entryway that leads into the the fortress. Um, it is out in the open across the courtyard. Um, there are, you know, stacks of supplies and things along the way that you can dart to as you want to go. Uh, I will need you to make a stealth check. Okay. Yeah. As as a a rotund, not minuscule creature. So. Uh, I'm not there, but is there sky above? Sharp. Yeah. Can you give yourself a bonus? No. Um. Um. Eight. Oh eight. God. Uh, okay. Cool. So. Okay. Cool. <laughs> You stop rolling like dog shit. I know, I know! <laughs> you first, you, you wait for the guard to pass, who hasn't noticed you yet. You skitter across a good like 15 foot range and kind of get behind what looks to be a almost like a, a hay bale, but it's not hay, it's some other kind of like dried grass that was brought from or farmed somewhere nearby in the Hellcatch. And you kind of get there, and back up behind it. Glance over the next thing you can see. What looks to be two barrels open. Um, uncertain if there's anything within them, but they are just kind of set out in the open, either to collect water or they contain something for quick access for the people within the courtyard. You rush over to it, and right as you're about to get to the shade behind them, you feel a hand grab you from the torso and lift you up, and a voice go. Oh goodness! What's this? <laughs> and like oh, baby you, Adam. you feel your world <laughs> whip around up into the blue sky, and you see the, just the dark kind of uh, exterior rim, kind of, of 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 a shaded face, up, kind of framed by the sky above. And as your eyes focus a bit, you can see what looks to be a, a tough-looking woman warrior, um, shoulders exposed with scars, muscular, um, has this like wide. Bright white, toothy grin, and uh, eyes that are kind of green like jade. Um, her skin is very, very suntanned, and her hair is almost like a like a bleached white. That is in a, like a back braid to protect it. That kind of goes past the shoulders. Uh, she's wearing some leather armor on the shoulders, and um, you can see what looks to be a gold. Uh, chain around the neck that carries what looks to be a, a bird skull with like a like a golden mask over the front of it, um, and she kind of picks it up and goes, "Oh my goodness, you're so cute! Who are you?" I I start shivering. Oh. Oh, no. <laughs> oh my god! I don't even know what you are, but you're adorable. Oh my god! My guns! My guns! 
my 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 cunt. cunt? <laughs> my cunt. I heard my cunt. Yeah. <laughs> Paging my cunt. <laughs> it is my cunt here. All NPCs are now named David. From here on out. We, we can't have nice things. We cannot. Can we just say we, we can't have nice things. My name. My cunt. Harry Butts, get over here. <laughs> The spelling in my head was different. But, but let's just say, let's just say, my guns is has a rough time with his title. You hear you hear Snickers nearby, and he goes, "Just call me Mick." <laughs> Have you seen something like this? It's like, what the heck is that? It's a problem with making shit up on the spot. Sometimes, sometimes it's not a winner. Hey, you talk for twenty thousand hours. <laughs> somewhere, somewhere, the spirit of Provence, like, ha! Ah! Um, He's outranked. It's normal where I come from. Comes up, he's like. Oh, what is this? This is this is adorable. Oh my! What's how that? is this alive here? Did it just did it escape? Was it like some sort of uh, like exotic animal that escaped? I don't know, but it's mine now. I found it. I'm gonna call you. What should I call it? And the Mick uh, leans over and goes, "Call it Killer." Because it's ironic. It's like, <laughs> no! I'm going to call it Fuzzbottom. Come with me, Fuzzbottom! And kind of puts you under the arm and kind of like cradles you like a baby and begins to carry you towards the fortress. I'll just nuzzle into her. Okay. I love this. You see some of the other kind of guards like stand up and look <laughs> over, and she kind of like <laughs> pulls you away from there, like giving them a look of like, this is mine. Step <laughs> off. Um, the. <laughs> Swishing of yes. sights around you and blue sky suddenly goes to darkness as you're brought within the interior of the fortress. Is everything all right? Yes, someone um, has now taken me as their pet. <laughs> Great. Yeah, but I'm inside. Oh, that's wonderful. Okay. She's doing good. Are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> we should really be used to this by now, I guess. That was a baller move. It was. You are carried from hallway to a left turn, down another hallway, mm -hmm. down a set of stairs, oh down another hallway, Gosh. another left turn. Yes, I'm, gonna try, I'm gonna memorize this. Okay, so uh, you're, you're trying to keep this all in mind as you go. Um, and you can see you're passing by other kind of uh, arched doors, simple. Uh, you see another person step out and move past. These look to be like subterranean barracks, um, living quarters for various paragons call Individuals. I'm also looking around for Armand. Right. Uh, roll a perception check for me. Okay. Have, Do Quoka have good vision? The other god. party. Nope. Oh, <laughs> god damn it. Okay. Am I adding my perception? Yes. Okay. 14. Oh, oh okay. 14. Not too bad. Okay. I'm keeping that in mind. Uh, so the rest of the troop, you guys were probably staying back how far? Oh, block? Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. Are you talking about the, the yeah, group that's. Group? Team Fern or the other team? The other team. Yeah. We were just so they're around the back, right? Yeah, so yeah. we're on the other we're side. In front. Front. Okay, so you're, you're across a, the street? A couple yeah. hundred feet or so mm -hmm. from the other troop. Yeah. Anything oh. we want to try while we're just sitting here with our. So well, I'm, I'm going to like go to about like 50 feet and be like. Oh, God. To, to who? <laughs> what do you. If I see them, oh, to be like, to oh, us? Oh. Who's that <laughs> person? That's, that's dusk. Do we need to get your opticals checked? <laughs> Maybe. Oh, no, we were fixed recently. Um, I uh, message dusk from afar. Oh, oh dusk. dusk. Oh, you can do the thing too. Hi. Hello. Uh, what's going on? Um, it's well, uh, Fern turned into a really cute quokka and I ran <gasps> across the street, and then uh, a burrowed underneath, and then now she's caught, and um, she's getting a tour of the place and stuff. So I feel like oh. we should probably meet up and everything, and and, and uh, you know reconvene with all of the information that we have hmm. right now. Honestly, oh, this is 
par for the course. <laughs> yes, yes, sounds like it's going great. Let me check in with the others. Hold, please. <laughs> um, so, Jet, FCG, um, I guess Fern is super adorable and he has been taken as one of the uh, Paragon's guards' pets well, and is inside. I guess the question is, do we do we act and send someone in to rescue her, or just see how this plays out? Maybe just see how this plays She's, out, or do you want to? Do we know how long she could stay as a I furry could, bottom? I could try to hmm. cast a spell on someone and have them go in and retrieve her. How long have we seen Fern last as a as a fuzz bottom? At most, about an hour. Is that, is that how long it lasts? I mean, like you know, I, I don't know why we can't have two initiatives going on at sure. the same time because it sounds like she's going to do really good on two. the inside. But we could test two like, hours. What an outward response would be to some kind of threat. What a threat? What? Yeah. What would your suggestion be? Well, I mean, like cause a fucking ruckus and then disappear, but then everybody else can uh, you know can see what happens. And see the response. Yeah. Time. Where do they come out of? Where's sure. the barracks? Do sure. they mount up quick? Actually, three hours now. There is a middle ground where we just get whomever of us is the most unthreatening on the outside to go in and try and retrieve their animal creature. They'll yeah. respond like they're, you know. Do you think the Paragon's call is going to give up the cute animal? I don't know, but we'll I, at least see what their reaction I to have, it is. I do have a spell that might convince them to, but. Oh shit, I put Dusk on hold. <coughs> oh, Dusk! Oh, Dusk! Oh. Uh, hello. So sorry. We're still debating. Um. Okay. Keep holding. <laughs> so, I put it back on hold, it's fine. Um. I kind of like this idea, though. Should we just do it, or should we just consult the other? Do we have an idea yet? We were just sort of banding just, about. Are you talking about the, the idea of just pure chaos? Yes. I mean, I mean, you gotta kick an anthill every once in a while to see what happens, right? All right, who's gonna do what? I mean, if you want to wait a little while, there's a middle ground. Uh, as let's give you can. let's give her a little more time to check the place out before we send it into a total ruckus. But I'm not against this plan. Oh, yeah, wow. Plus, like you know, distracting things towards the outside may cause a little less attention on the inside. Also, may give her an opportunity to get the fuck out. Yep. Um, okay, let me update Dusk. Oh, Dusk! Hello! Um, all right, so, we kind of want to like, see how this plays out. Um, we're going to keep watching the front. Worst case scenario, maybe we'll cause a ruckus. Ruckus. This is horrifying. Um, sorry that my messages aren't as peaceful as Imogen's. No, all right, no, no. Are you, I like them. Okay, all right. Hmm. Okay, uh, so they're just gonna kind of hang out over there and see how this plays out. All right. That's probably for the best. <laughs> so I guess maybe we can kind of do the same <clears throat> if, if you trust Fern to, to uh, be okay. Implicitly. Okay. Fern is one of the most trustworthy people I've ever come across. Meanwhile, while you are being brought through the hallway and keeping watch on the low lit interior, the occasional kind of uh, you know, tinder burning brazier or oil burning lantern hang on the inside, uh, are 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 Quokka's, uh, low light creatures? Let's I find out. Are, I doubt it. I'm going to say no, because just for the sake of this. <laughs> they're, they're out in the daytime. But, what they but are, if they're not, those. someone will give them. Continue a to look it up, but in the interim, you are brought to a, a simple barracks chamber. The door opens, and your captor. Uh, they're nocturnal. They're nocturnal. <gasps> All right, that does help. Okay. Uh, so to that point, you you do not have disadvantage on your perception checks, which okay. is good. Um, you're brought into this this chamber where there are uh, three bunks set up, kind of cots within the room. There are a few like foot lockers, kind of arranged around the base or underneath them. Uh, there's a couple of small weapon setups and some armor racks that are affixed to the nearby wall, um, but it's just a plain, simple underground barracks. Um, you can see there are looks like personal lock boxes beyond just like the foot locker that sits at the base of the bed. Uh, but as you're brought in the chamber, the woman soldier who brought you in sets you down and goes, 
Oh my god, you're so cute. Um, let me see what I got for you. Uh, and she rummages in the Foot Locker and pulls out a small satchel and kind of opens it up and has tobacco. Um, I go over and just pause and just sniff and try to just be real cute. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> you're just so fucking cute, I can't stand. Oh, stop it! <laughs> stop it, you're too cute, it hurts my heart. <laughs> oh my goodness, okay, hold on. Um, I'm gonna give you a pastry. <laughs> pulls in and pulls out a, a small, like, like dried bran muffin type thing and breaks it apart and hands you a piece. Oh goodness, just look at you. Okay, <laughs> enjoy that. I've got to get back to my uh, my post, but uh, don't go anywhere. And we're going to cuddle up tonight. Oh, ho, ho, ho. <laughs> if you're going to poop anywhere, poop on his bed. I'll just curl up in a little ball. Okay. Oh my god! <laughs> ah! Shh. And then leaves the room and closes the door behind you here. Oh shit. I'll take a nap. <laughs> Real tired. Um, oh, Incredible. okay. Are there any windows in the room? Are there? No, it is a no, subterranean barracks chamber. There okay. is a singular door out, and it is currently, you assume, latched or locked of some kind. <laughs> okay. Um. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, can I you can I talk to her? I can't yeah, remember this. Yes, that's we, right. We're, we are connected. Okay, so I'm just taking um, a, a, a little bit of uh, just lounging uh, on a bed right now uh, what? of my new owner. <laughs> um, but I think she closed me in. I'm gonna get up and just try to see if I can nudge open the door. Like okay. my 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 paw. It's not moving. Is okay. it going? Okay. Uh, well. She's not injured. Yeah. It's dimly lit in here because of the, the torch sconce, but you have pretty decent vision in the light. Okay, is so. there any other any other doors, any other openings that maybe I could make an investigation or through. perception check, your choice. Okay, okay, okay. Come on, okay, come on, okay. do one double digit roll. Come on. <laughs> can, you guide yourself? can you guide yourself while you're a, a little No, you cannot no? cast okay. spells and beast. Check check my hunt's personal. Fourteen. Belongings. Yeah. Fourteen. Uh, glancing around the interior of the chamber, the only egress is the singular wooden door. Fuck. Okay, I'm gonna start scraping and crying. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's so no, scary. That's... <laughs> <laughs> there we go, there we go. Come <laughs> on, oh, let's find that door. Okay. She's trapped, she's trapped, she's working her way out. Fern? Please keep us posted. I will, I will for sure. You've only got a few more minutes left before I cannot talk to you anymore. Okay, it's, everything's gonna be fine, no stress. <laughs> no. Keep scraping and keep scraping and keep scraping and keep scraping. Uh, about two minutes pass, uh, three minutes pass, four minutes pass, and right about then, you hear <laughs> And the door opens, and you see a large looming figure there with a sword out going like, What the fuck? Oh. <laughs> what is this? What is this little one? And he reaches over and grabs like the scuff between the shoulders and kind of picks you up a bit and lifts you in front. And you can see now this. This rough looking gentleman in his 30s, he has like sunburnt patches of skin, like fresh peeling that you can see in places, has kind of this jagged mohawk that's kind of more bushy at this point that goes down to the back, um, is wearing just a simple tunic over like a, a, a stringy but muscular body, but definitely like more of, a, not, not as, as bulky as he is lanky. Um, and he has a short sword in his hand that he was just about to stab whatever was right there and kind of just holds it and kind of got, is holding you there, grins with a, uh, a smile that contains most of his teeth. Um, it's just, oh, you are just adorable. Oh, you might know. <laughs> Closes the door, looks around and kind of tucks you into the chest and walks a little further down the hallway, heads right down another Peeking hall. Peeking out, seeing if I can see anything else new. Make another perception check for me. <laughs> this book is going to get passed around the entire oh. paragraph's call. Uh, nine. Nine. Okay. 
Perception? I is have high perception, perception, but I can't use mine. Yeah, no, no, no. it's your perception. I can use mine? Sorry, as when, when, when a druid takes an animal form, they get to keep their mental statistics. Oh, great. Better than you thought. I've been rolling way better than I thought. Okay. That's okay. Oh, that's fine, that's fine. I'm sorry. We're here now. 16. My bad. Uh, yes, 16. That is so much better. Yes, that's so much better. <laughs> With a 16, you move, you move past, and there's mainly just closed doors uh, on this Lower floor, as he's pulling you beyond to the left, there is actually an open, uh, not even a doorway, just an, an, a, a hall that leads into a larger, well lit chamber to your immediate left. And as you kind of glance past and look, you see what looks to be a table. On this table, there are all manner of sheets of paper that are stretched out and held, un unfurled with different weights at the corners. Um, you can see what looks to be a number of chairs off to the sides. There are candles lit and glowing as well as other lanterns in the vicinity. And there are three figures in there, uh, two of which look to be uh, other Paragon's Call figures, though well armored and dressed. And the 16, a third that you do recognize. Uh, you see a half giant figure, uh, the one that beat the shit out of Ashton at the ball. General Ratash. You start growling. You start growling. Oh, 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 oh what, what is that? No, 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 don't growl. We're friends, it's fine. And he just keeps walking down the hall. Okay. Goes to the right, opens another door, and there's somebody in there snoring. Goes, ah, oh, shit. Uh, I'm gonna put you in my footlocker. A little bit of food. Just hang tight until my shift is over, and I'm, I'm gonna, gonna come I'm get you. I'm gonna start wiggling, and I'm gonna try to wiggle away from no, it. I, I, yeah, all right, I need you to make uh, an athletics or acrobatics check, which will just be a straight roll. Okay. Oh God, it's a natural one. Natural. You wiggle. And wiggle and wiggle, but he has a firm grip on you, and he's like, "Oh, you're not going anywhere." <laughs> uh, goes in. I'm gonna bite him. Okay. Uh, I'll say, just go ahead and roll, roll an attack. Oh God, this is so stupid. This is so stupid. It's this is so stupid. It's better than roll an attack. Am I adding great. anything? This is great. Uh, no. <laughs> eight. <laughs> Straight up eight. Yeah. Okay, so so you do bite. Um, and you and you, you catch, but I don't know if it's the patch of skin itself is pretty tough, or you just aren't used to having strong jaw muscles with this creature. But you, you're not breaking the skin enough to really do some damage. You bite and you sink, and he's like, "Ah, ow, son of a! You're gonna learn manners." I'm gonna try to spread my legs and arms so he doesn't put me in the box. <laughs> okay, he, he opens the footlocker and is like, "No, you gotta." <laughs> Stop it. No, you're just supposed to. And the other person begins to like rouse in the bed and goes like, What is that sound? This is so ridiculous. No, uh, <laughs> nothing, go back to sleep. It's like, What's you bring a cat in here or something? What's that you got? This? No, no, it, it's. Uh, uh, <sighs> and I was like, Stern pauses. goes, You know, we're not supposed to have pets. <laughs> <laughs> Closes the footlocker and stands up. Fuck you too. Poof, slams the door on the guy who's napping. He needs to walk back through the hallway, kind of holding it out in front. As opposed to now a pet, it's now like a rodent that he caught and is just like backtracking through and goes, uh, seems like one the kind to be nice anyway. And walks past, kind of backtracking. Now across that room once more where you see the figures in there. Continue on down, now to the right. To the right, up the stairs, and walks back out into the courtyard, kind of holding you out in front. And the woman that first caught you turns and goes, oh, I, oh, and just has to kind of like swallow her pride in the moment. And the person goes like, "Found a rodent! Open the gate." The two of them go by. Let's rush in. <laughs> one, of them, one, one of the guys goes. Send it to me, I'll chuck it over the wall. And it's like, no. It's too cute. <laughs> Open the gate! And uh, two of the gentlemen go over and start hitting these heavy cranks. Open the gate. I can't hear you anymore. Oh, shit. Is this the front gate or the back the gate? This is, this is the front gate. Okay. We're not there. Fucking go, well, rush at the back. But there the front It opens up ever so slightly, like about a foot wide, a foot and a half wide, before they stop. And it just takes you and. 
no. chucks you at a 20 foot arc. Oh, no. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I don't have to uh, fall. I will <laughs> say. <laughs> I will say just for the sake, this make a dexterity saving. Okay. Please take damage. Oh my god. <laughs> D- did you say dexterity? Yes. Okay. Uh, Thirteen. You roll with it, and as the your your furry body hits, it's you don't impact with any rocks. It's you don't end up like oh twisting god. the wrong way and actually hurting yourself. You just roll with it and <laughs> getting dusty and stop, <laughs> and kind of coughing. I try. Before- I turn around real quick, and before the doors close, I just smile at him. Yes. <laughs> Shouldn't have bit me, asshole. And he steps back as the gates. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna try to go find a, another. I just uh, see. Do, uh, do we see this we saw at the that. front? Yeah. Over ah. here. I run over. I skitter yeah. over there and try to find a spot to <laughs> go back to me. Easily enough to do. You find a little pocket of shade off the side of the building, and then you come back wow. to your normal form. I message uh, Dusk. <clears throat> Fern is in the front. I repeat, <sighs> we have Fern in the front. In the front. Oh my God! Lana told you. Yeah. All right. Yeah. As as we're walking towards the front, um, hey, um, are you, are you and uh, Ladna, um, the thing? I'm sorry, what? Are you in? Are you and Ladna a thing? A thing? A thing. Like, what do you mean? Like. Romantically entangled. Um. No. Okay. Okay. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Um, because I was, you know, kind of getting some vibes and everything, and I, um, you know. <laughs> yeah. I, I could see it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Good talk. So, Ladna, <laughs> I was wondering, mm-hmm. uh, Imogen, uh, you, you and you. <laughs> <laughs> Going somewhere, but thank you. <laughs> wait, are you uh, wait, what? What? Uh, what? Well, what? What? Pot holder? Really? <laughs> I should have gotten her the T-shirt, okay, and fresh cut grass. No, no you me out of it. It's, it's not pot holders or T-shirts. You, you, <laughs> you must have done something pretty fucked up if you are in like pot holder territory, right? <laughs> I did something so okay, fucked it's up. Okay, no, it's okay. She's fine. Just she's come fine. on. Come I don't on. want it. Here, come on. <laughs> just have a little. Just come on. Come on. Just, just. I don't want it. <laughs> uh, uh, don't you? It just collapsed in ash. Okay. Okay. Now, <laughs> the worst. She's mad at me. Now, clearly. She's gonna be fine. Cause I'm a terrible friend. No, you're not a terrible friend. But Come I on. Am nope. Though. Nope. You're not a. You're not a terrible. Friend. <laughs> what do you cry, by the way? What is this shit? <laughs> oh, sorry. Sometimes it comes out as a little black and no, inky. I'm, cause I, you know, I'm, that's, it's, it's so cool. scary. No, I, I like it. It's cool. It's just I wanted to make sure it's not going to stain. <laughs> there's, I make no promises. Okay. Okay. Do Do you want some friendly advice from someone who has literally pissed off everyone they've ever met? Okay. Okay. I don't need to know what happened. It's not for me to know. It's your business. I broke her rock. <laughs> oh god, it was one of the, the shiny rocks, wasn't it? Was, she loved it so much. Okay. Then I killed it. Was, was it an accident? Yes. Okay. Does she know it was an accident? I don't think so. Okay. Well, this is so much more than I bargained for. So you've well. got black snot on your shirt. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. I'm sorry. It's seen worse. Really, it has. Uh, Are you sure? Oh, maybe not. Fuck. <laughs> okay, but. Oh, so. Is the skirt the wipe? It's, it's what it's there for. Okay. Uh, 
maybe you should focus on an apology that's related to the offense, if that makes sense. Maybe, maybe let's focus on instead of. I should prostrate myself on the ground. No. On top of a spiky rock. I mean. Let her step on me. I'm not going to tell you not to do that because that would be kind of cool, <laughs> but no. I think maybe we've got to figure out a rock based apology, if that makes sense. I said a spiky rock. Yeah, but like. <laughs> Like thematically, more than thematically, a, a, like a an understanding of the offense, if that makes sense, an apology that actually speaks to what happened. Do I have to get her a new rock? I mean, I, don't know if I could replace putting that. some energy into a new rock might not be a bad idea. Okay. So maybe we need to find you a nice rock for 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 image. Would do you think that would help? Would that feel a little better? I feel a little confused on the messaging. <laughs> <laughs> I'm working with what I got here. I can try and find her new rock. I should have got her the t-shirt with I, FCT. I don't think the t-shirt would have. Wait, what's happening right now? Oh, well, yeah, we should focus no, on. No, no, no. This sounds very important. No, it's the really. Or not it's of it. Is you it mentioned coming? Wait, is it mentioned coming? It's the belly of the beast. Here, here, no, here, no, no, just, no, just go fine. for it. Go for it. Is it what? Oh. I'll, yeah, did you see Trashy in there? Um, no, but I did see the guy that beat you up. Amazing. Um, Didn't beat me up. And, well, just. Do you think you could sketch out a map of the inside? Yes, I could. Do we have paper? We have dirt. <laughs> I can draw it in the ground. Exactly. Okay. Everything can be solved with rocks. Tiny, tiny, tiny rocks on the ground we can make a map with. Rocks solve everything. Um, Art is just tiny rocks, and I broke rocks, so we gotta get it. Are tiny. they coming back over here? I, get, by the I way? think they're almost here. I can see them coming. <laughs> you catch up with the rest of them. Oh, hi. Okay. okay. Oh, totally fine. Totally fine. Um, so. <laughs> I figured out sort of the layout a little bit, which I can I can draw out. I saw You shouldn't the, do that. Well, I know. I just <laughs> it's my go-to, I guess, and I just sometimes I just feel really comfortable in an animal shape. And it's just fun. <laughs> to her credit, it, it worked like a charm. Well, I don't know if it worked like a charm, because I don't know if I necessarily figured anything out. But um I did see a big room. There were three guys in there. One of them was the Damn one that, that Ashton fully beat up. I mean, it was and close, I'll give him that. It was very close. It's just and close on his end. He was in there, there was another one, there was something on the table with, you know, things holding down the corners. I saw all different types of rooms with lots of beds and foot lockers and whew. I didn't really get a lot of it. That sounds like a total win. And you came out unscathed. Yeah. They took they they took me out. They just were like, oh, it's a rodent, so just put you right out. Yeah, but that might not happen every time. I know, I know, I know. And I think I've definitely learned my lesson. It was the same smile. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. My cocoa I'm face, my mom, my cocoa face. I will try. I will try. <laughs> yes. I, I'm very uh, sorry my, if it stressed you out. Oh. You know, it's very brave of you. Well, 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 thank you. That's so nice of you to say. I think it's, it's a little reckless because it's a little fun. A little reckless. But you know. Super too though. <laughs> Yeah, you're allowed to be. You're allowed to blow off some steam. You just got some news about your parents. Yeah, that's yes. serious. But that's crazy. but how does this impact our plan for getting this guy yeah, out of there? You didn't hear anybody talking about Armand. I didn't. It does mean that we'll get recognized if we go in. Well, yeah, there is somebody. There's somebody who knows well, us. Well, oh, yeah. That you know, General. Britannish was in there, so maybe, you know, you guys could do the plan of, hey, I'm here to, to, to fight. Take you up on your offer. To take you up on your offer. Yeah. It'll be, it could work. The only thing that's really a problem with it is then I'd actually have to take him up on the offer. 
or at mm. least be serious enough to talk about it that he then wouldn't realize that. I mean, we're just trying to figure true. out if Treshy is in there, right? Yeah. So normally with like a fortress where it's all, you know, shelled up and everyone's on the inside, you want to reverse that shit and get everyone on the outside. Mm. So start a fire. A fire, attack the fences, cause an explosion, kill somebody. Make them come get you, and then you go. Steal above. a crawler machine and slam it into the front gate. Well, yeah, it's yeah, a great idea. Oh my god, I really like that. I really want to steal a crawler machine. I really, I didn't, and now I do. Or tip one over onto the gate. I lived here for years. How did I never steal a crawler? We could do both. Sure. Should we wait till one of theirs leaves leaves the gate and then sort of? Ambush it? It'll, it'll be know. I even feel more. Like there was a crawler that went by that recently that was pretty worse for the wear. I think another crawler would be the way to go. I think it's not about they'll they'll know there's infiltration but if there it's was one of their own. Three Just people to one, one, one of their own right. back. We could mm -hmm. be like, open up the gates. We got to We're back from the crawl, and and they'll open up the gates, and we'll go there right was in. Big crawlers. There was one person driving, one person on the second tier near the the turreted gun, and like a third that was like a mechanic that hopped off, or just the two. Uh, you didn't really see who was driving necessarily. You just saw clusters of probably a little over a half dozen individuals uh -huh. that were utilizing it between the two different platforms, and there was one person who was an engineer trying to do repairs that let down. Much worse. Yeah, you want to go and get there that There were a lot one? of people on it. There were a lot of people. Yeah, on half it. dozen people is more than two. Yeah, that I guess he never stole a crawler before because it was difficult. That doesn't sound like me. <laughs> Uh, one question on the lower <laughs> level before I totally get rid of this idea. Is it like an open air bottom level below the, the second deck? Like, is there lots of ventilation or is it like enclosed with small little windows to see out of? The subterranean portion, you mean? No, on the crawlers, like the above the legs, you said it's like a double Oh, on the deck, crawlers? Right? Oh, it's open air. Okay. It's, it's like, it's, it's, it's like, like a, a platform dock with legs. Got it. Got uh, it. It's, it's primarily designed to, to, to move a lot of people, <laughs> essentially. Just slice some throats. Oh, yeah. Kick them off you've, the side. you've lived here long enough to know that, that those are referred to as mammoth crawlers. Mammoth crawlers. And they're used specifically for like moving a large number of you know, crawler gang members from one place to another. Usually for warfare elements or parading around as a show of power and influence. Is that one that passed us an hour ago long gone, yeah? I mean, it's it's been an, uh, almost an hour, I'd say, since all that went down. Um, but it's also it's a big fucking crawler, mm -hmm. and probably not the only one. Definitely not the only one. All right, so we do this one or two ways. We do sneaky way. We do big boom way. And there's like two booms. One, you set up something on the outside, and everybody watches. How many people come outside of the inside of the fortress? Are we talking about two dozen people, three dozen, four dozen? If everybody comes out to see the problem, there's fucking 50 people inside that changes shit. Then you do the big gate attack. We don't even need to attack it. We just need the guy to come out, right? If he's even in there. If he's not going to come out if there's a big explosion, but a lot of other people will. Maybe it's the combination of big distraction and a sneak, uh, sneaking in while everyone's distracted. Now you're speaking my language. What if we just sneak in and somebody starts a fire from the inside? Yeah, you want to empty the building out. A little dodgy about burning and building them, but if you want to empty out the anthill. When you were in there, did it look like earth and stone, or was it like all wood? I think it was. I think it it was. Uh, what was it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, the jo majority of the halls were just carved from the the sandstone and rock and dirt that makes up most of the terrain here on this plateau that's surrounded by the ravines. Um, but there were wooden doorways, wooden furniture, um, you know, a, a, a decent amount of, of things that were added to the rooms and chambers that are wood, but the majority of the actual structure is stone. I say we get in there and start a fire. <coughs> I like Big Boom from the outside. I agree. I think all of these crawler, ideas are very boom. solid and we can do all of them. <laughs> <laughs> On the outer wall? If we're not going to steal a crawler in this town, what are we even doing here? <laughs> Why did we come to this place? I am so proud of you right now. I am so proud of you right now. You can't win one on the in the. Uh, oh, there's like a, a circuit, right? You can't win one on the circuit, can you? No, that'd be insane. Uh, you can look into it. What about Joe's? 
Let's, uh, you know. He's maybe, Tinker, right? What's the circuit again? Maybe it's time, oh, maybe it's time for everyone to, here. who can I talk to about Death Wish? Death Wish. Oh! Yeah, they mentioned that there's like a competition. Yeah. There, there. Uh, I mean, it's run by uh, the various crawler gangs. It's kind of a, it's kind of how they settle disputes between them, since they they don't take it to war unless they want to really take it to a murderous space out far outside of town. It's more of their sport in dealing with conflict. So generally, various crawler gang leaders will be the ones to to situate it. I, I used to know someone who worked there too, didn't I? There was somebody. I feel like somebody. I. I don't know. Let's head. There was a figure. Toss into the recipe. The Gorgine are also here, or in the outskirts of the town. So, oh. if we don't want it to just be us trying to, I don't know, assault a fortress, we could, you know, staff up a little bit. I'm just tossing that out there as like a little parcel down the side. Werewolves to roll in with I'm us. I'm just saying we fuck shit up. The trick with this is. We can't look affiliated with anybody. The minute it becomes, you know, group versus group, the things get very complicated. So we have to make sure we don't. Plus, you're talking about the hitting wall. the outer wall with one of these big things. If there's a VIP in there, VIP's not going to run out into the courtyard mm -hmm. at an attack. If anything, it's going to be the opposite. Soldiers will come out. VIPs will be moved in or out another entrance. Mm. What if? What if? What if we do that? What if we have? No, no plan of mine is not going to include stealing uh, a crawler. <laughs> <laughs> but so if we have our crawler ready, I've got the fun part. Now give me the nutrition. Kay. We got we got the crawler that we've stolen at the ready. It's parked around the corner, ready to go. Right. We cause a disturbance. It's it. We make it look like people are there to kill the VIP. What are they going to do? Are they going to batten down the hatches? No. They're going to put them in a crawler and escape out the back door. And then our crawler is going to catch. And it's like a crawler on crawler chase <laughs> through the crawler. desert. Well, there might be a lot of merit to this inside outside team if one team is a distraction. But if the other half needs to be on the inside before the distraction starts so they can see how people on the inside are reacting and if there is hidden entrances or back doors or the need for a fire. I look over everyone's shoulders just in the off chance that Treshy is walking. I know, moving. that is exactly yeah. what I just thought. Pocket's the individual you were considering. Pocket, thank you. Um, yeah. Make a perception check. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, do I know you guys? Uh, that is uh, 19. 19. Yeah. No sign of Trish. <gasps> Comedically, that would have been perfect timing, but. <laughs> so well, the well, it seems I we got to find it. This is a wealth of really good ideas. Is there anything like, you know, one of somebody maybe messages him or maybe Imogen gets in his head and it's like, you need to come out side right now for some very important reason? I, I mean, I, th there is this spell I keep mentioning. I could send one of his people in to go get him if if I can cast a spell on them. Wait, we can like... I can just convince a person to go do an action for me, like go in there, find Trashy, and tell him that he's needed outside. For how long? That's great. An hour. Oh! That feels so much If it works! Sure. I mean, <laughs> We just got to find someone powerful enough that they can actually access him. It's so. Britannish. I. I mean. That's the thing. What if, what if, we go in. We talk to Britannish about joining. While we're doing that, you cast a spell on him. He goes and gets Armand. I don't know. We get him out. Sure. Yeah. What if? It's a lot more logical and Spitballing. Sensible. Spitballing. Yes. What if you go in to talk to the general and Wolf Manchette is invisible with the little sure. cage bead? Mm. And you keep the general and folks busy and you go find our target. But do remember that cage bead doesn't keep them small, they turn into a giant. Human-sized right. roly ball right. Right. of cage. Wow, I think that really changes the plan. So instead, <laughs> you, take, you take the hole <laughs> and you roll them in the hole, and roll it up, and get out. Oh my God! Wait, ten so minutes. You got ten minutes to ten get the minutes fuck out. Ten minutes of air. Dodge. Okay, that's pretty good. So Ashton and I will be we'll talking to Ratanish. Push them in the hole. Gather it up. 
Ash and I will be talking to Rattanish and mm. sort of mind melding him to go get Treshy. Uh-huh. You're just there invisible until you're needed. When Treshy comes out, we nab him, we put him in the hole, and we bring yeah. him out to our awaiting getaway vehicle, correct? <laughs> or we just walk away. Or there's a vehicle waiting to spirit us away quickly. Okay, I think I'm gonna go with the robot and Ashton's team. Um, I think that's where I'm gonna go. Everybody else? Which one, which what, which? <laughs> Yeah, chaos or sensibility. It's chaos and chaos. Yeah, yeah. chaos and or sensibility. I like, I like this sensibility. Is a great idea. <laughs> you know? That one sounds like the least amount of yes. things going wrong. Keeping the general occupied for. I think for you just talk, talk him up. Pretend like you're taking him up on his offer. Chetney finds this guy, rolls him in a hole. Well, invisible, no, walks him out. I can get in easy, invisible, but as soon as I do anything, like try and put him in a sphere, I become visible again. Oh. Then you well, you just need have to act quickly. something greater than that invisibility. I mean, I'll be a, I'll be a goddamn werewolf, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> I can only open up so many throats. <laughs> how, how often can you be invisible? I can be invisible for an hour once a day. Once a day. Can but when you do something, you, you un- Yeah, if I attack or cast a spell. And, yep. So. Or change. So we're, we're, it we're would literally That's a little bit more true mm. to the game. So the only way to do it would be to. Again, this well, is a fortress. I like that we're trying to come up with an idea in the same day. But we've got days before your parents get here. The Gorgine on the outskirts of the city. There's also Joe's to go to, and we could surveil one of these gargantuan things walking around and rob that fucking thing. You know, we don't have to be hasty, but I'm also here for hasty. So, I am new here. (laughs) (laughs) Welcome. But I will say, that you all come up with a bunch of, you bunch of make a bunch of very, very good points, some better than others. I think what I'm hearing is that we go in with a group with as many people as we can, either hidden or concealed or, uh, you know, with a pretense for being there. Um, we at least see if he's there, scope it out. Uh, compel somebody to tell us if he's there or to go get him for us, uh, and then we g- get out because there is no way that we are going to be able to storm a fortress. Yeah, no. That's just <laughs> my thought. Yeah, that's true, that's true. Do, the, do, the, do the people that you, uh, FCG, do the people that you uh, um, mind meld, do they know? They, when when the spell ends, they will know that they had been affected. Okay, so we have to save that to the very end. Why, they'll just quit afterwards, because it'll be a shame. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a couple days, I feel like. So are we going to stake out tonight and just kind of keep watch on the place, or are we going to leave? What else do we need to know? We don't even know if he's still here, right? Mm-mm. Nope, I'm assuming Not he's still there. No, but we could stake it out, and between image and reading people's minds and me reading anybody who's walking past, Conversations, we can maybe learn something instead of stealing a tank and driving it into the side. Of he went shopping, I might add. It's not like he's locked up. He's not a prisoner. We already know that he's out and about going to pawn shops. It stands to reason he'll do it again. I mean, we also have Furioso nice over here, at some point. who we could totally get dressed up and do a whole thing, and you know, she could be one of the crawlers. And yeah. hey, I'm here. Let me in. Mm-hmm. We'll I don't know watch for goes. a day or two. If that doesn't work. We could also we do maybe big. we could do something to where we go to the the, the pawn shop, the mm-hmm. the river of renewal, and um, have them. Maybe we can compel them to send a message to Treshy saying, "I'm about to sell your ring, but I know you were very attached to it. Would you like to buy it before that?" That's a great idea. That's too so maybe draw like him out. Send a message. How? Well, he knows where he's staying. It's not like it's a secret to that guy, right? So he could send a message. But I mean. Or we could send a message. That's what I'm saying. Like, why do they have to send the message? That's a very good point. <laughs> or to make Can it believable, you? deliver a message that's on paper saying, I sure. need to move this, but I wanted to give you one last shot that's at brilliant. reclaiming your goods. I have a serious buyer, but I know you were very attached. Yeah. If you're willing to pay me. 
25 gold more than what I sold it to you for, I, I would be willing. We're gonna be clever. If we're gonna actually do something like this, then we're going to need some one of us to go in and actually buy something, get the name of the owner of the of the establishment and a sample of their handwriting in the form of a receipt. Oh my God, that's Plus, can we just like um, or we could just steal a car, or, or just <laughs> we're gonna do that too. It's just not part of this plan. Why he just sold this thing a week ago? Why would he want to buy it back for more than what he paid? Because it's, it's very dear to him. Maybe is it? he's he hoping just sold it to a pawn shop. Mm. But in it, the it's hopes. a duplicate of a ring that he's worn for years. His entire life, it's a family heirloom. Then why would he just sell it? Because he's he doesn't it's have anything, anything else of value on him. Well he then how could he buy it back? How about exactly. this? Exactly, it would be enough to draw him out. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Imogen, what if rather than upping I... the amount, say, I found a solution, I found a way for you to reclaim your goods. I use a prestidigitation and I create a copy of the ring that I saw. Mm -hmm. Can I just go up and? No, I, I don't think he'd buy it. We've already dealt with him thinking he had the ring and it, weird situations. I don't think he'd believe that somebody just had the ring and would give it back to him. Well, you I know what I'm mean? not gonna give it back to him, but you know. How would I, you know it came from Treshy? Mm -hmm. You true. would have had to find, you would have. Because I talked to the person. I, I talked to the shopkeep. I just go up and I tell them that I have this and I want more where this came from. Well, why don't we just stake out tonight and make decisions at dawn? Dear Mr. Treshy, I have a proposition <laughs> for you. I'd like to discuss it in person. No. I think I can get you your ring back. Please meet me at sure. the River of Renewal. Sure. Can we send, send him right like a, a gift card? To the river of renewal to incentivize him. Uh, the owners, what are the owners' names? It's, uh, it's the it. Hero family, I think. I don't know if they're. The, I don't know if there's anyone to really talk to there. It's kind of a loose collection, but like, if I recall, the family that runs it is probably not uh, down to fuck with people. You just put it on paper in an envelope. Yeah. Find so a messenger. Do that right now. Yeah. And we got paper? I got paper. Are we really just going to write a random note as opposed sure. to like actually trying to make a note that might be slightly more reasonable to? I think oh, we're, we're overthinking this. All right. I, I think we just want to see if he's there or not. I yeah. agree. All right. Yeah. Theoretically, too, if we have a group of people who just watch here, maybe a group of people on the other side, we don't even have to wait for him to get to the ring. Hmm? He's just got to leave the building. He just yeah. has to leave the building. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah. We could stop him on the way. Grab exactly. Him. Yeah. Maybe we should scope out some no dark alleys. No scoping. Well, we, we may gotta do something both. here. Both. Yeah. I've done read both. I'm writing the letter. Did we get that shopkeep's name? I can't remember. Liam Ashton said. has it. I genuinely do not. I know the owner of like the the, the, the river itself, but those are individual. You just put manager of the river of the name. And just a, just a question. It's family owned. Let's say he does leave. He starts heading towards the ring. We make a move on him. Mm -hmm. We knock him out, keep mm -hmm. him alive. Mm -hmm. We're saying we're going to successfully extract a living human being out of this city with a bunch of crawler gangs and paragons call just the eight of us. We don't want to staff up at all with a fortress and motorcycle Mad Max gangs coming after us, so we can get to an airship that's not here yet? <laughs> we can just hide for a day. Oh, yeah! <laughs> I mean, one way of getting out of the city We could be rushing it be just a sort of titty vehicle. bit. I would agree. It's a fortress! <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Fern, guide us. <sighs> <laughs> what time is it? <laughs> By this point, I'd say it's like early to mid afternoon. Oh. I was going to say we could Let's go, go to, to bed. <laughs> it's too late, on it. It's Let's too early. To okay, I'm going to start walking back to the. One day, we could work <laughs> on an exfil plan before we okay. do anything. <laughs> well, because I can Okay. Once we get them in the black hole. 
We've got ten minutes to figure out what the hell we want to do with the mountain pads. <laughs> yeah, we should have this. Th I mean, uh, we're trying I mean, to get him out of. We're behind enemy lines, right? Literally, we wouldn't even have to to fight him. All we would have to do is push him into the hole, grab the hole, run, find a <laughs> quiet place to pull him out. <laughs> Tie him up, gag him, and then figure out a way to get him back out of the city. Yeah. Push him. And if anyone, like if anyone down. tries to, if anyone comes looking or tries to find him, we just throw him back in the hole and fold it up yeah. and hide it. I'm all here for it. I'm just I'm trying. Just as long as it, we can get away just within just ten talk. minutes, wait, shouldn't. Are, wait, are you saying we're like every eight minutes we open the hole and That's close right. it again? Oh, no. fresh air. oh my god! Uh, yeah. <laughs> Shove him back yep. down like a fucking whack a mole. I mean, I've done worse things in my life. I'm not. Going to say I haven't done better things. I feel like a bit of a bad person for he this one. He literally becomes an art print that you carry under your arm, and then we can just go from building to building to the entire city. Uh, so letter, letter, letter today, or are Imogen's we? Imogen's gone. Yeah, Imogen. Uh, oh great. Wanna... Okay. Yeah. Well, I guess smart. we're just going to spend the night here. Then. We're going we're gonna to spend the night, we're going to figure out exactly what the letter should say, where we want him to meet us, and see if we can just set a little bit of a thing. What a, a, a bit of a trap. We're just going to make a trap. Okay. All right, that's all. We're going to make a trap. We have Image. several options. Mm -hmm. You trek back to the Bank of Renewal, back to the River of Renewal. Um, what are you looking for? <laughs> um, I'm just going to walk on in to the mm -hmm. River of Renewal. All right. Is there somebody at the front end? Indeed, the the same two figures that were running it before. The gentleman who initially had the conversation, uh, from what you gathered in corresponding with the dusk, steps up. Hello, hi. Can I help you? I'm looking for a prison. Of course. What sort of prison can I uh, find for you? Something that looks fabulous but doesn't cost too much money. No. Oh, uh, looks over to his associate, who kind of like gives a nod and pulls a small satchel out and begins pulling out these the kind of wooden drawers about that big and sets them out. These are generally more of the, uh, would be considered costume jewelry, but mm. not quite as poor. They are presentary, but you know, affordable for those of us on a, a squeezed copper. Right, uh, nothing too ostentatious. I want it to look believable. Understood, understood. Yeah. Um, and it's like pulling out bracelets and uh, like dual finger cuff, you know, rings and like singular rings uh, that all, uh, you can see at first glance, are polished well, but a discerning eye would see a lot of these are like bronze, brass that are just kind of like polished and plated to look like they're worth more. Um, any particular preference that you'd like to pull from these? Um, sure, I'll look at that. Double finger knuckle brain thing. Okay, so it has it's like it's like two fingers that are affixed with a single bar on top, and across that bar there is uh, what looks to be elemental uh, writing uh -huh. on it. How much is this? For this, uh, let's say three gold. Ooh, all right. Um, and if I wanted to be serious and get something real. Well, I mean. And he leans you over to the glass case that has a number of the other pieces of jewelry and pulls out the same drawers from earlier with dusk and begins to reveal the other rings and such. These go upwards more like 50 to 100 gold pieces and more, depending on what you're looking for. How about that little one with the ruby? Oh, this one? This is be a 65 gold piece. 65 gold. All right, yeah, I'll get that one. Uh, All right. I'll get that one. Wraps it up. Could I get a, a receipt? No, certainly. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Sorry. And what's that? your name, sir? Oh, Adon. Adon Hero. Adon Hero. Nice to meet you. Pleasure. What is your name? Adon Hero. Jenny. Jenny. Make a deception check. Sure. Come on. Mm -mm. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Fifteen. Fifteen. He goes. Pleasure. Finishes writing up right. the receipt. Just folds it up. From the block. No. Takes it and tucks it into the case with the ring and passes it over to you. Jenny. Thank you. Of course. Uh, feel free to come by should you require anything else. Oh, thank you very much. Hmm. All right, I head back. Okay, you return with the rest of the group. All I'm saying is wow. a vehicle of some sort. Doesn't have to be a crawler. I have another seat. Oh, you got something. Orm. <laughs> Orm looks so relieved to see you. Holy that shit. Out. That's, that's add, on add on hero? Yeah. You talked to one of the the heroes. Oh wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. That'll do it. Who are the heroes? He's one they the own shop. they own the whole thing. Yeah. Oh, that's the, the thing. That's what? the family that owns that whole bazaar, the whole like Oh. Apparently that's 
their 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 part bright. of the shop. Then I, I wouldn't know, but wow. Can uh, do we have a, a handwriting person I here? I guess that Treshy would respond to that level of. Uh, he well, might. an influence, that's yeah, than just a that's random a le- shop. Legitimate per- that's a legitimate person you have there. <coughs> They're right. not necessarily, you know. What do you need for um, copying, a, forging a letter, and a signature and stuff like that? Just something that can look like this handwriting is all. Yeah. There are forgery kits, technically, but uh, you'd have to be proficient to get the benefit on that right. one. What would a shithead use to try to do a forgery? I mean, it would be just standard materials, ink and parchment, and then uh, a hopeful skill and check. And a performance check? Mm. Uh, it, it would be, it would depend on the type of forgery, okay. and I would give a couple of options okay. based on I'll who's doing it. I'll take a whack at it. Oh. Yeah, that's a good performance. Right. Let's do it. Okay. okay. We'll just want to, like, three people could do it, and we just, we yeah. could choose the I'll best one. Oh, that's best. true. Yeah. Sure. Let's all try and the to... rest of us judge. Let's, <laughs> let's. <laughs> Let's yeah. go back. Maybe, maybe we should just go okay. back to to our our rooms and sit down and and uh, have a, a for, forgery contest. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, you know, Let's I go. am thinking about what Chetney said. If we want to go, maybe either seek out. <laughs> <laughs> seek out Imahara Joe's or the Gorgine, so that maybe we have a place to stash Treshy. You know, sorry, allies. <laughs> That's not okay. When you put it that way, you, you kept you kept saying hiring muscle as opposed to making friends. Staff up, head count, <sighs> allies. Allies, I can get behind. I mean, if this if this Imahara Joe's is friends of, you know, your parents. Yeah, I'm sure if I told them us. that we have somebody that we're keeping hostage, we're they'll be fine with. Him. Their pride would swell. Fuck, do you think they'd be Maybe. fine with yeah, a hostage? I think so. I mean, it's been a long time since I've seen them, but I think they would be okay with that. Maybe we should talk to the werewolves. Well, I'm just saying, I can't forge for shit um, unless it's in wood. Just, so, just <laughs> I'm just going to be doing this. Like, Fair like, enough. Let's just go back to the hotel, because we're not going to do no, anything no, tonight, yeah. right? Okay, we'll go back so to the hotel. The Gorgine exist in the gloom jungles of A. Shanador. Which is to the southeast of Basaris, outside of the Hellcatch Valley. Oh, uh, it's okay. not close at all. It's it's still a journey oh, well. to get them. Yeah. You know how we well, get there. Sorry, man. Well, I guess I'm, I guess we better leave now. <laughs> I'll commit to it. See you later, guys. Bye, <laughs> guys. Okay, hotel. You're not far, contest. but still a ways to go. All right. Hotel forgery contest. Who's who are our competitors? Did you say it was a performance check? Dust? No, it depends on, on, on who they are and what, what your angle of forgery is going to be. So <sighs> it's Dusk and Imogen and okay. anyone else? Uh, nimble I'll fingers. Go. I'll go for it just because, you know, fuck it. Okay. Yeah, why not? Each attempt, because it is uh, quality paper and ink, it'll cost you, about, I'd say, about a gold per attempt just, right. just, to, add, just to add some stakes sure. to this sure. beyond yeah. you guys just yeah. trying this forever. Yeah. Until it's only taking one round anyway, so yeah. yeah. All right. All right. um, let's all um, shield our eyes so we have we you know, know, we're, exactly okay. no yeah. biases mm-hmm. because Imogen's is going to be the best. Let's be honest; she's the most capable. She's really good at writing. Don't try so hard. I was that supportive before. Okay. So, uh, for the attempts at this forgery, you have the option to either roll performance or roll a straight dexterity check. Those are your options. Okay. I have a straight dex on my end. All right. I will go for it. I will focus dusk with a. Unless you get proficiency in a forgery kit. Plus one proficiency in a forgery kit. No. Somebody better roll well. I rolled this one. Is it good? It's bad. Thirteen. Okay, we got thirteen. Ten. All right. Seven. Oh. Seven. 
Six. Oh. All right. So wow. dusk definitely. Oh yeah. What'd you get? Two. Twenty-three. Twenty-three. There we go. Oh. All right. Look at this guy. Look at this dick over guys. here. So yeah. there's a series of dick butts, <laughs> and then. <laughs> Honestly, I was going to say like like in in part of your earlier training with the Arashari, <laughs> there was definitely you know classes in calligraphy and some of the ancient writings mm -hmm. of the Ashari tribe, specifically of like symbology and the various uh, elements and the usage of their symbols, both in magic as well as. Uh, just iconography used both on body art and signifying temples and such. And there's something specifically meditative about that process that when you begin to get into it, it comes naturally to you and you surprise yourself with the quality you're able to, uh, to produce. Well, Derek taught me to uh, write on the air. Mm. I like that. So amongst your various tribes, we'll put a five gold out on supplies, and cause this is like multiple attempts each of you. This isn't like you did one. This is like wasting a bunch of paper and materials, and eventually getting like, ah, fuck it. Yeah. Sorry, I'm just not good at this. <laughs> I don't know. So you're better Team than effort. I am. Yeah. Mm. But Orm, you have a proper uh, deliverable note. You'd feel confident sending that direction. That's as good as it's gonna get, right? <clears throat> So, probably want to hire a runner. I feel like we could have Dusk do it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I could do that. Tomorrow, tomorrow morning. Saturday. Right and early. Okay. What time is it right now? That's right now you're getting close to dusk. No. Hey! <laughs> Pun intended, but yeah. Double entendre! Oh. <laughs> um, should we skip to the next day? Is there something else we want to do tonight? Does we want to are you, do you want to separate rooms, or are you like in the same room? Should I get a room? Uh, kind of all I don't know if there's room. We have a few rooms. We have a few rooms together. rented at the Raha Den, which is in the uh, uh, Samagunda Strip on the north side of the city. Oh, we could definitely just crash on. Yeah. We always get a few rooms, but Convention then we all rules. stay just in the same them. room. Yes. Should we keep an yeah. eye on the. I mean, what if he's leaving tonight? Keep an eye. Somebody there all night? Watch party? If, if he's leaving tonight, you're not going to see him leave, I don't think. I think they're going to, he would leave I'll quietly. I'll a good nice rest and we'll deal with everything in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You all are posting back up at the Raha Den for a full night's rest with the letter in your pocket and at the ready. Can we, like, talk about Fate Wild and stuff? Can I stay in your room? Of course, I would love that so much. Okay. 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 As you all post up in your individual or gathered group chambers for the night, a uh, sense of comfort mingles with a rising anxiousness of the days ahead for a multitude of reasons. The draw of what may or may not reside within that fortress to reveal the quarry that you have come here to gather the truths being revealed and unique tethers that unexpectedly attach some backgrounds and pasts as one. A slight itchiness comes to your head through the night as you feel your hair beginning to return to you. <laughs> and a, a wary bit of rest comes to you as the occasional Night predatory bird's caw <laughs> keeps you staring out into the open sky. I almost forgot about shithead. But nevertheless, taking watches, taking care, and preparing yourselves for the following day and days ahead, you plot. And at dawn, you plan. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll end this episode there. We'll pick up next time. Fresh in the morning to engage in whatever series of chaotic plots you're putting together here, which I'm all for it on all scales. The of pulleys and levers. I am, I am all about uh, infiltration. I'm all about uh, crawler explosion. I'm all about all of it. So just. Got a little bit of time to think Planet. amongst yourselves, yeah, figure yeah, out what you want to do, and uh, we'll come back hey. next episode and see what you've uh, put awesome. together. So, oh anyway, uh, thank you all for joining us. Happy to be back. Uh, we'll be back here next week to see what follows in the interim. We love you very much, and is it Thursday? Yeah. Good night. Yeah.